London's defensive coordinator when they won that title. Now he's returned to Richmond as the head coach of a nationally ranked Spider Squad, which has already played two top 25 teams on the road and beat Colgate last week. Today, the Spiders run to the roar of the home crowd, hosting Howard next. Storylines abound on a warm Saturday afternoon in Richmond, Virginia, as we count you down to kickoff with the Lumber Liquidators pregame show ahead of this afternoon's first ever meeting between the Mike London-led Howard Bison and the Russ Huseman-led Richmond Spiders. Welcome inside our Spider TV broadcast booth along with former Richmond captain Chris Anderson. I'm Bob Black. Sean Robertson from WTVR TV will join us in just a bit from down on the sidelines. So here's your table of contents of all those storylines. The head coaching connection, dynamic quarterbacks, one team with a prolific running game, the other team trying to find theirs, and both teams with their final tune-up before conference play begins. And Chris, when this game was scheduled in the summer, I would guess Spider fans weren't as excited about it then as they are today. Who saw this coming, right? I think a couple months ago in the summer, Coach London gets hired, and we're probably just talking about Coach London in the return. You enter one Kalen Newton, the quarterback, and all of a sudden you've got magic. They go out to UNLV, they get a, they get their win. Now we have a power-packed game. We've got uh, the Spiders who are coming in off, you know, two top 20, excuse me, two top 25 uh, performances, and uh, and they're one and one now. We're ready to go. Like I said, we got a dogfight today. Well, let's pick out one of those storylines, and let's talk about the quarterbacks. You've got a young freshman for Howard and a seasoned veteran and a redshirt senior for Richmond. So let's start with the Bison. Kalen Newton has been terrific, Chris, particularly on the ground to start his college career. So right now he is currently leading the MEAC in yards per carry as well as well as rushing touchdowns. The kid is dynamic. He is uh, listed at 5'11". That's definitely a media god 5'11". He's a little shorter than six foot, but you can't tell it. He packs performance in everything he does. Uh, right now he's going to be dangerous. He's tough to tackle and he can he can throw well enough to keep the defense loose so we're looking forward to a great game for him all right on the other sideline the spiders have the red shirt senior in kyle Laletta. he's been doing it with his arm chris he leads all of division one football fps or fcs in yards passing mr fantastic <laughs> mr steady eddie i just i love his his uh the way he's comfortable in the pocket the way he understands his receivers and what he's trying to do and where he wants to go just really has a good feel when you talk about a red shirt senior what you want them to look like he's a he's picture perfect He's what you're looking for. Looking for another big game out of him, uh, both in the air and, and maybe running the ball as well. All right, that's our Davenport and Company scouting report for you this afternoon. There are even more storylines in this game. For another one, let's go down to the Spider sideline and welcome to our broadcast this afternoon, Sean Roberts. Sean? Thanks, Bob. Another storyline to talk about is the decisive home field advantage that the Richmond Spiders has built since opening Robin Stadium in 2010. They are 33 and 11 here at home, winning 13 of their last 14 games since 2014. And they have won 11 straight home openers, including all seven here at Robin Stadium. So they have the decisive home field advantage against a Howard team that is playing their third straight road game this afternoon. Guys, back to you. All right, Sean, thanks. And the Spiders and Bison will play today at Robin Stadium in front of a sellout crowd on Family Weekend. We'll be back to kick it off for you, starting lineups and the start of our game, coming up in just a moment. How do we make 83 degrees on a now overcast Saturday afternoon. Welcome back to Robin Stadium. First home game of the year for the Richmond Spiders and our first telecast of the year and the first game on the sidelines of Robin Stadium for Richmond head coach Russ Huseman. He's got his Spiders at one and one, having lost to Sam Houston State and having beaten Colgate. And then Mike London on the Howard sideline. Appropriate, we welcome him back on family weekend. He's a member of the Spider family as a former student athlete 
assistant coach and head coach. Chris, a great storyline today between these two guys who helped lead Richmond to the national title in 2008. It is a great storyline. And what I like is just when you talk to, about these coaches to, to any of their players, former or current, you hear about two tough, hard-nosed coaches, kind of old school. Do they know the X's and O's? Absolutely. But what you talk, what you hear about is their ability to, to motivate, their ability to bring young men from, from boys to men. And I'm telling you, when you start talking about building a program that's special, both these coaches can, are, are, are excellent at that. And you can see it uh, in just the, the drive and the determination in their players on the field. Howard was 3-19 and 19 the past two years before Mike London arrived, and he's turned things around quickly with the eye-opening win over UNLV in a competitive game against Kent State last week. Meanwhile, Russ Huseman back now as the Spiders head coach, and in the locker room before the game, he had an opportunity to talk with his guys, and our Sean Robertson was able to get in there and eavesdrop. Sean, what would you learn? Bob, he mentioned three things when he spoke to his team prior to them coming out before the game against Howard. He said they must do their job they have to run the football against the Howard Bison and the last thing he said was he better give the game ball to somebody on special teams so look for special teams to play an important role in today's game against the Bison all right we will look for that shot and I think getting that running game is particularly important to coach Usman and the spider offense today well the first special teams that'll be on the field for Richmond is the kickoff team 99 is John Cherison the graduate student transfer from Notre Dame he is ready to kick it away to get our game started this afternoon sit back relax enjoy spider football the home opener is underway inauspiciously as Cherison kicks the ball out of bounds on that spider sideline Chris that's no way to get a game ball to your special teams definitely not the way you want to start the game now perhaps he was trying Trying to do uh, maybe trying to kick to the sideline, kick uh, kick a pooch, but I think most of the time what coaches do want uh, their kickers to do is try to kick it inside that 10 yard line, but towards one of the corners makes it definitely much easier for your coverage team. So Howard will get the ball up at the 35 with this starting offense, and we already featured the dynamic quarterback. Kalen Newton, but Chris, they got a guy in the backfield who Russ Huseman thinks could be an NFL guy and running back Anthony Filyaw. Yes, number seven, Anthony Filyaw. Get used to hearing that name. I got a feeling you're going to hear a lot of it today. NFL potential is what we hear every time he's brought up. He gets the ball on the first play from scrimmage, and there's the guy who was the CAA Defensive Player of the Week, picking up right where he left off. Andrew Clyde knocked him off stride in the backfield on the opening play from scrimmage. He must have known, like he was next on the cue card, next player to talk about. Let me go ahead and make my play now. Excellent job. Splits the, the, the defense right there, right between two offensive linemen. Let's feel y'all know, hey, I'm here too. Empty backfield, Newton to throw. Now he's going to use his legs. Brandon Waller almost got him. Newton throws downfield, and what a catch by Guy Lemonier in Richmond territory all the way down at the Spider 30-yard line. The senior from Miami, Lemonier, hauls it in from Newton. Chris, we talked all about Newton's legs. He just showed off his arm there. And he did, but that's also where he's special. Right off the bat, he had some pressure, had penetration, able to avoid it and still get the ball off. Desmond Wortham on the carry, up-tempo, hurry-up offense by Howard. No huddle, right to the line of scrimmage and snap the ball. That's going to be something that to watch all game, the defensive line for the Spiders. Like I said, on that pass, they got penetration, but it's one thing to watch it on film. It's another thing to see it close up, uh, Newton's ability, uh, escapability. Second and eight. Newton will keep. Has some running room at the 20 and down to about the 15-yard line. He finally got knocked off his feet down there by Daniel Jones, who came up from the secondary, kind of shouldered him to the turf. Jones, the hero last week against Colgate, one of them with the interception that sealed the Spider victory. Phil Yaw on first and 10 in the red zone now from the Spider 15. Richmond does a good job of bottling him up that time. Brandon Waller with the tackle. And you can see right off the bat, there is a commitment. Uh, all eyes are on Phil Yaw to, to get him stopped today. In terms of Newton, he is not an easy to bring down guy. Big legs, legs like a truck. So you're going to have to really get your face across the front and tackle him. Both of those guys average 100 plus yards per game rushing. They give the ball to Wortham, graduate student running back out of Frisco, Texas. And the Spiders bottle him up as well. So now you got him in third and long in the Spider red zone. Great job. 
job by Dale Matthews, just stepping up, filling the gap. Again, that's a sound uh, uh, tackle. You can't really coach it much better than that. Howard on in the red zone is eight for nine for the first two games this year. Newton wants to throw the fade to the near side, and it is knocked away, and that'll be incomplete because the receiver, Kyle Anthony, was out of bounds when he caught it. Jeriel Jordan, who Mike London just sung the praises of this week as a terrific cover corner, was on the coverage there. Yeah, Jeriel Jordan right there, and I like the way he played all the way through the play. As a defensive back, he gets the, he strips it initially, but the ball's still playable. It's still up in the air. You can see right there, gets his hands, and then you have to come back and put it in again, and it, it, it does make the catch, but he's out of bounds. Great job by Jeriel on that play. So the Spider defense will hold Howard to an apparent field goal attempt. This is Dakota Lebowski, one for one on the early season. This is a 29-yard field goal, and the Spider smother it. They pick it up, and Richmond will have the ball up at the 30-yard line. So the Spider defense bends but doesn't break, and that's how you get a game ball on special teams, Chris Anderson. Right on time. It's like they're in the box with us. I, I, I had a feeling uh, that there was some... A coach only says that when he's got a few things uh, up his sleeve right there. He looks like that Daniel Jones getting through. I love the way he lays, up, lays out. And, and guys, you practice that. You don't just dive at the ball. You see the way he kind of turns his uh, body slightly to, uh, you know, horizontally to lay out full contact to that ball. Next time you want to scoop and score, though. Now the Spider offense will take over at the 27-yard line. So how about that young Daniel Jones, who, as we said, had the interception that sealed the win last week, has the blocked field goal attempt to start our game this afternoon. And now Kyle Laletta, the nation's leader in passing yards, has the ball in his hands for the first time, and he gives it to Deontes Thompson. And I think Chris Anderson, Russ Huseman, and offense coordinator Jeff Durden are going to make a statement early. We want to run the ball today. And it's going to be interesting. What I liked right there, and, and Coach Huseman has been talking about it really since the spring, he wants to work sets where he can get two backs in at the time. That time you saw Deontes Thompson, who got the carry, but Gordon Collins also in the game at the same time. It just gives some different things, some different factors that the defense has to consider different things to look at uh, and it's just a great option to have Thompson last week 12 carries 32 yards he did have a touchdown now on the end around it's Cortrell Simpson on the jet sweep turning that left corner and out to the 40 yard line or so and Chris that's another way to get your running game going it doesn't always have to be a running back who runs the football it doesn't always have to be a running back and it doesn't always have to be between the tackles so you're coming out right off the bat you want to stretch the field Cortrell's a good guy to stretch the field with plenty of speed gets outside he also has the ability to make guys miss as you saw in that replay there's your Spiders starting lineup, and Chris, let's highlight Deshaun Brissett. Why not? He's leading FCS in receptions and yards, 20 catches, 317 yards on the season. Loletta's first pass goes to his big tight end, Garrett Hudson, and Hudson picks up four on first down. Hudson, a name that we're used to hearing a lot, haven't had a, heard a whole lot this year, had a big catch uh, last week that, that set up a, the, you know, a, a big touchdown that we needed, and uh, just coming along. Easy catch right off the backfield. You can see Kyle go from his first to second and then third option. Seventh reception of the season for the Spider Red Shirt senior Garrett Hudson. Actually started his collegiate career at the University of North Carolina and then came here to Richmond, and the Spiders certainly happy to have him. Second and six, first possession for Richmond. Laletta on the far side for set makes a defender miss. Picks up a first down and about a 20-yard catch and run. It's one of my favorite words, Chris. Yak, 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 yak. Yards after catch. Yards after catch. And I know you're not big on this wide receiver screen, but let me <laughs> tell you. Gonna let me, let let me tell down. you why it's great. It's just another way to, to open up the running game, especially get your one. It's an easy throw for your running back, easy catch for your your receiver. Kind of get them in the flow of the game. Makes those defenders have to tackle right now. 21st catch of the year for Deshaun Brissetto at 12 catches 159 yards last week at Colgate from the Howard 36 this is Deontes Thompson and he's got running room inside the 25 
and down to the 23. That's a 14-yard run for Deontes Thompson. That'll be his longest run of the season. What I love about Deontes Thompson, if you listen to me enough, you, you keep up with the Spiders enough, you hear me say it over and over again. He's, I love his patience. Slow to, fast through is what you're teaching running backs from the time they're in Pee Wee until now. You can see it, it's slow developing, but once he finds that hole, he, he plants and he goes. Maletta from under center for the first time. Calls Thompson's number again, and there he goes. Deontes Thompson spun down at the one-yard line, a 22-yard gainer. What an impressive opening drive by the Spiders. And no doubt about it right now, the offensive line is, they're, they're taking some things personal, and that's the way you got to play the game. They're out here trying to just make a, you know, make a statement right now, and they can really do it down here by the goal line. Thompson looking to finish it off doesn't this time the penetration of that front line by Howard Isaiah Flood junior defensive end playing in his hometown he's a Monacan grad from here in Richmond and boy Monacan had a huge upset win of Manchester last night and Isaiah Flood's younger brother was the star quarterback for Monacan in that upset win big time win for them I don't think a lot of people saw that coming but sometimes in football the only people who matter are the guys in that locker room so congrats to them shakes things up a little bit in the uh, central region back at the two-yard line second and goal Thompson tries again and this time he's in for the first score of the game and what an impressive opening drive by the Spiders Deontes Thompson finishes it off with his second rushing touchdown of the season second in back-to-back -back weeks so much to this drive on this run what I love about it is obviously there's a hole there but I love it as a running back you got to smell it you know you're down there by the end zone lower your get your shoulder pads uh, level low get your head down and get into the end zone now the PAT coming from Griffin trial and a great start to the game and the home season for the Richmond Spiders and Griffin Trowell finishes it off with the PAT. What an impressive drive. Seven plays, 72 yards. The Spiders march downfield after the block field goal, and they've got the first points of the game on the scoreboard. 8.42 to go, first quarter. Richmond seven, Howard nothing. Well, if the Spiders were looking to impress all the moms and dads who are in the crowd today for family weekend, they have done it at the outset of our game this afternoon. Officially an eight-play, 73-yard drive, three minutes and 52 seconds. Chris, it's finished off with Deontes Thompson busting his way in from a yard out. I tell you what, as impressive as the finishing of the drive was, I also like the way the, the drive began with the big-time special teams play. That's uh, something that uh, Coach Usman is, is focused on. And then getting the stop in the red zone uh, by the defense. Well, Howard's going to give up points. They've given up points, but what we know is they can score point points in bunches, and anytime you can keep them out of the end zone, that's a big-time win for the Spiders. Let's see what John Cherison does with his second kickoff. Much more traditional and much better. This will be Lemonier between the hash marks at about his six-yard line, and he runs into his own blocker. Otherwise, he would have had even more real estate, but he gets out to the 26-yard line. Much better kick by John Cherison. Gets it where we need to get it. Uh, had enough height on it to get that uh, that team, kickoff team, some time to get down there. Like I said, there was a hole there, but uh, we were able to make the tackle only out to the 26. So the Spider defense now will try and stop this Howard offense that's number one in the MEAC in rushing, 267 yards per game. That's actually 11th best in all of FCS football, and they've been averaging over 450 yards a game in those first two contests that came against FBS teams, UNLV and Kent State. Here's Phil Yaw trying to turn the right corner. A lot of blue jerseys in pursuit and not much gain for Anthony Phil Yaw. And you mentioned it earlier, Chris. You right. can tell the Spiders are zeroed in on number seven, aren't they? Absolutely zeroed in. You can tell right there. Uh, first person who gets there is actually Springs. He doesn't actually actually make the tackle, but he's got three or four guys with him who corral uh, Phil Yaw and make the tackle. So I expect to see a lot of that today as well as keeps as well. Phil Yaw again on second down, and the Spiders are there to gang tackle him. Daniel Jones and Dale Matthews Jr. in on the stop. Trey Moore getting up off of the bottom of the pile. That was one of the points of emphasis last week, Chris, and I think it's carried over. Spider defense has to do a better job of tackling, and they're doing that. Well, tackling's been something we've talked about all year, and, and if you want to improve tackling, you got to get more hats to the ball. So on every play you've seen, we've had multiple hats to the ball. 
Newton will throw down the near side. Boy, that's terrific coverage again by Daniel Jones. He is just playing some terrific football. The sophomore out of Williamsburg. Uh, his dad is the high school coach at Bruton High in Williamsburg. Played his football at Hampton. And I tell you what, he looked like a coach's son on that one because that was designed to, to really fool your safety, fool your linebacker, sneaking the uh, the back out of the backfield. Um, and, and they're just hoping to find him wide open. Uh, no, it wasn't going to happen. Daniel Jones had him blanketed uh, in terms of coverage right there. Now Dakota Lebowski, who's handling all of their kicking chores, punt, place kick, all of that, will punt it away. Tyler Wilkins standing back at the Spider 30. Low snap was scooped up well by Lebowski, and then he tried a rugby-style kick and not with much success as the ball goes flying out of bounds on the Spider sideline. You can see the Richmond guys over there pointing all the way upfield as to where that ball went out of bounds. The Spiders are going to have some great field position. And it put uh, number 48, Gus Lee, for the Spiders, really put him in a tough situation because it wasn't a great snap. So he's back there, and you can see, do I go for the block or do I and, and risk you know, hitting his leg and getting a penalty. Uh, and you can see he just kind of played it safe, and it really paid off. Wasn't a great punt at all. He did uh, change the positioning of the punter, didn't get much length on it at all, and uh, another good drive uh, place to start for the Spiders. So this is one of those times, Chris, we've seen it in years past with a guy named Brian Brown. When you start a drive at midfield off a bad punt, Kyle Laletta has been known to go deep for the home run on the very first play. I think what you saw in the last drive was a lot of patience. Let's see if we see anything different here. He's not going deep, but he is throwing, and Cortrell Simpson is wide open. They gave him a lot of space, and he makes the catch at the 41 for a gain of 11 at a spider first down. 14th catch of the year for Simpson, who had that huge game against Sam Houston State with 204 yards receiving. And that's something we heard Dejan Brissett talk about last week. They garnered so much respect. Uh, that the teams are really playing off of them, playing soft. And then last week at Colgate, they just took advantage, just short out, short hitches. Looks like it's going to be more of the same this week. Caleb Drake has the ball in his hands now, and he gets all the way down to the 35-yard line. So he picked up six on first down. Caleb with his fourth catch of the season. And uh, Caleb Drake, I know we've been saying it since he's been here at Richmond, since he's touched, uh, touched the field. And if his family's listening, I'm sorry, but i got to say it again. He can flat out fly. So they don't care how they get him the ball. If it's a, if it's just, if it's throwing deep, if it's a short screen, they just want to get him the ball in space and let him go. I think his family likes when you talk nice about him, so they won't mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. kind, of, kind of interesting here, Chris. They, the Spiders have used Deontay Thompson already, Gordon Collins in the game, and Jay Palmer already getting an opportunity. The Spiders go with two running backs to flank number five there. Kyle Loletta was going to throw again. He's going to scramble. Looks to the sideline, loops it downfield, and throws it away. Well, a couple things on that one. Number one, uh, Jay Palmer, we talked about him earlier. He's no foul for intentional grounding. Quarterback was outside the tackle box. He's earned that opportunity to get on the field. Another thing we're going to say is uh, if you look at Kyle on this play, this is you talk about that injury last year. Was he injured? Really? Because it doesn't look like it there. He still moves, scrambles, avoids a rush nicely, and uh, you know just plays it smart, gets rid of the ball, live to play another play right here. We've got third and five, so I think this should be something the Spiders can pick up. I think that's where he's improved the most is his elusiveness since that knee injury. He's got a great arm, and boy, he just threw a fastball to Tyler Wilkins, who made the catch, and Tyler knew what to do with it. After he caught the ball, that's a 13-yard gain and another first down. And I tell you what, in years past, if Brian Brown has been the deep threat, Tyler Wilkins has been the third down money guy. When it's third down, third and medium, third and short, third and medium, he's a guy that Kyle has learned to look for, he always looks for, and he just keeps, you know, coming up big time for him on that one. Easy pitch and catch, knows what to do, gets right upfield, gets the first down. The Spiders get Tyler Wilkins going. My goodness. Here goes Cortrell Simpson on the jet sweep down the sideline. He'll pick up another first down all the way to the eight. And boy, doesn't the Spider offense look sharp today. Coming in smiling. I love the way he comes right into the camera smiling. I tell you what, it's not just the guys out there who are performing. They look good. But there's an also a, a fluidity that you feel uh, coming from the offensive coordinator and the coaches upstairs. It's, you know, they're, they're learning new players as well. And you can tell they've got a good feel 
of what they want to do this game. And so far, it looks great. Cortrell Simpson, the transfer from Temple, he is having fun out there, smiling right into your living room or wherever you may be watching this afternoon, and we appreciate you tuning in. From the eight, first and goal. Palmer on the toss, left, tries to turn the corner, bounces off a tackle, and out of bounds. He didn't have much room over there, still picked up a couple to the six-yard line. Jay Palmer, the redshirt sophomore from Princeton, West Virginia. Yeah, moving into the boundary, like I said, he didn't have a lot of space, but he's a big back. Every time I look at Jay, he looks a little bit bigger than he did the last time I saw him. So he's uh, definitely committed to that weight room and that uh, and that D-Hall. Uh, he looks good. And uh, so makes it second and six here to see what the Spiders have in mind. Red zone, uh, you know, progression and moving and really putting points in the end zone has been a big uh, point of focus recently. The numbers on Kyle Laletta, that season opening game, the record shattering 506 yards, and then he followed that up last week with, quote unquote, Chris, only 306 yards against Colgate, his 10th career 300 yard game. Timeout, Richmond, best at first, full timeout. So the Spiders use their first time out. Give us a moment to talk a little bit more about Kyle and just how he's bounced back, Chris, from the knee injury. 850-plus yards in the first two games. And as I said, I think he's improved his mobility. As ironic as that sounds, after a knee injury, I think his scrambling ability, his elusiveness, has been terrific through the first couple of games. Uh, like you said, he leads the FCS right now, averaging 432 yards per game. He had a... Uh, a poor 308 yard performance last week. Anytime you're saying that, you're feeling pretty good about the guy you got, your, your signal caller back there. And uh, I've said it a million times. I love his leadership. I love the way when we talk to Kyle after the game, the first thing he talks about is not what he did well, but where he needs to improve and where they can improve. He's been, he's spoken more than anybody about, you know, the, the point of emphasis being red zone, you know, coming away with points. I love that about him. He doesn't want a field goal. He definitely doesn't want to walk away with uh, uh, no points. He wants to get a touchdown. I'm sure that's something he's talking about with the, the guys in the huddle right now. It's been a tough go of it for Mike London and the Howard Bison so far in the game. And again, they've played two FBS teams, so the numbers are skewed a little bit. But, man, Chris, they're giving up almost 240 yards a game on the ground and almost 500 yards of total offense, and the Spiders have marched downfield on their two drives. Definitely been, uh, They've definitely been in a couple track meets, which is why a team like this is dangerous because they're always in it. From the six, second and goal, Laletta on the run. Oh, what a perfectly thrown pass to Gordon Collins. He hits him in stride at the goal line, and Collins into the end zone for the touchdown. So many good backs. We talked about Abrams. We talked about Thompson. And here comes Gordon Collins. I'm not going to be left out of this. Comes in to play action. Uh, Kyle Laletta does a great job. Again, watch the patience. Let's it open up. Looks to the safety off. Comes right back to Gordon Collins right there, right before he gets out of bounds. Easy touchdown. Well, let me say this. He makes it look easy. Kyle Laletta with his sixth touchdown pass of the season. Two of them now have gone to Gordon Collins. And Griffin Trowell connects on the PAT. So another impressive scoring drive. Seven plays, 52 yards, three minutes and 25 seconds. Capped off by a Kyle Laletta to Gordon Collins six-yard touchdown pass. The Spiders did it on the ground, and they did it through the air, and they've got a 14-point lead. Timeout, 4.05 to go, first quarter. So what are you in for? It has been all Richmond in the first 11 minutes, spoiling the return to his alma mater of that guy right there, head coach Mike London, who, of course, played his college football at Richmond, was an assistant with the Spiders, coached Richmond as a head coach to a 24-5 and record in two years in the national championship. And when he won the national title, Russ Huseman was his defensive coordinator, now the Spiders head coach. And Mike London talked a little bit about his relationship with Spiders head coach Russ Huseman. Yeah, I've known Russ, you know, for a long time. We were with and Mary on the st staff together. Our families know each other. Um, and it's, you know, it's important in this profession that, you know, that you still have, you know, colleagues that kind of want to do it the right way and, and it will pick up a phone and call you about, you know, different things. And Russ is that kind of guy. I'm, I'm happy for his success, you know, where he's been. You know, I kind of feel like 
little old cradle of coaches myself, guys that have been around, you know, so it's it's amazing. You know, we all stand on the shoulders of somebody else that's helped us. And we will return the favor a little bit later. Russ Huseman had some nice things to say about his former boss here at Richmond and a guy he coached with with the Spiders, Andy William and Mary and Mike London. So you'll hear from Russ in a little bit. Good kickoff return by Guy Lemonade out to the 40-yard line to give Kalen Newton some good field position. Phil Yaw gets the carry, and again, the Spiders are putting a lot of hats on Anthony Phil Yaw. He's going to feel the Richmond defense today, isn't he? Yeah, that's kind of, <clears throat> you know, it comes with being great. <laughs> Everybody's looking for you. Everybody knows you're out there. No, no doubt about it. He is obviously the focus uh, of our day. I'm surprised I haven't seen Newton keep it a couple times. The one time he kept it, it worked out real well. He's keeping it this time and throwing it under pressure and incomplete. He had to hurry that pass because Brandon Waller was bearing down on him. He tried to hit a wide receiver, Jake Kez Ezard, down the spider sideline, but he just didn't have enough time to make an accurate pass. Yeah, really, Ezard actually had, probably had Mansaw step here. I think he gave him a little stutter, and uh, Mansaw kind of broke thinking he was going to cut it short, maybe run to the sticks, and then he took off deep. Brandon Waller had a great game last week against Colgate with six tackles and a quarterback sack, and he hurried that one. Newton on the run again. Spiders are all this over him. dangerous. Chasing him to the sideline. He's not dangerous with all those blue shirts all over the place that time. Colby Ritten, the red shirt freshman who Russ Huseman just absolutely raves about on that defensive line. And Jerriel Jordan on the coverage. Yeah, he wanted to go at Jerriel right, right off the bat. You can tell Jerriel is ready for the day. Remember, he's from that D.C. area. I'm sure he probably knows a couple guys on this team, maybe played against him in high school. But you can say, see, he's got a little extra extra pep in his step. He's ready to go. Jerry will play his high school ball at DeMatha, Fort Washington, Maryland native. And again, Mike London just raving about him this week, the spider cornerback. So the defense with a three and out. And here comes another punt by the Howard Bison. This one's going to drop at about the 25-yard line, take a little bit of a Howard roll. This will be the worst field position of the day so far for Richmond. So we'll see how the Spider offense reacts to that. Richmond's offense has been stellar through the first two drives, has picked up 125 yards of total offense. And Chris, I know what Russ Huseman loves about these first two drives. The Spiders have run the ball for right. 74 yards and only passed it for 51. Absolutely. And I can tell you what he's frustrated about this drive now is that you're looking at where you're starting at about the 18-yard line. A lot of that is a direct reflection of the gate the great kickoff return so you get a stop maybe at the 25 20 yard line and then you get a you know a so-so kick they'd be in much better position but i tell you what i don't know if that's going to stop the spider so far today they've done a good job as far as that balance of running and passing the ball um, good to see them you know getting the running game going kyle's been almost perfect he's six for seven for those 51 yards and the spiders pull out another play this is tyler wilkins picked up a block and came up the sideline all the way to the 28-yard line right at the first down marker. That play didn't look like it was going to go for much, Chris. And Tyler Wilkins got one block and boom, 10 yards. Yeah, really a great job by the defender, number 19, for Howard. If he doesn't get there, you know, uh, Tyler's able to cut this up right away. And there wasn't there wasn't much there, uh, but, you know, I gave your pursuit time to get there. Elijah Anglin, the senior linebacker out of Detroit, was the guy Chris was talking about. But it's a 10-yard gain for Wilkins. And a spider first down at the 28-yard line. Laletta to throw, another completion. This is Wilkins, but good defense that time by Howard. And Tyler picks up maybe a yard on the play. Ty Freeland, the freshman free safety with the tackle. Let's go down to that spider sideline and find out what's going on down there, Sean Robertson. Bob, during the, uh, that last defensive huddle with the uh, with the team, Brandon Waller, defensive end for Richmond, was basically telling his teammates, at this point of the game, Howard may try some trickery, and they can't fall prey to that. So look for possibly some trick plays, and Richmond said they will be prepared for it. Brandon Waller is off to a great start this afternoon, really one of the leaders of that spider defense. Second and nine, and oh, Gordon Collins fumbled the football, never even got touched but never grabbed the handle and lost the ball, and the Howard Bison have come up with a turnover. Yeah, not sure exactly what happened on that handoff. Maybe we'll get a, re uh, a replay, but you can tell right off the bat the Howard sideline is exciting. They were looking for something, some spark, some type of uh, assistance here. Looks like Laletta as he goes, I don't know, puts it right in his gut. Just the squeeze wasn't there. 
wasn't prepared, and that's an easy uh, fumble recovery fumble recovery for Howard. David Lee, the senior linebacker out of Florida, who's off to a good start the first two games, adds to his stats with his second fumble recovery of the year. So now Howard on Richmond's side of the ball starts at the Spider 28-yard line, and that Richmond defense has been airtight today. Yeah, you can tell they, Howard also has a commitment. They want to establish the run. That's something that they've done pretty well this year. They want to establish the run. And uh, I think the key now is, like Brandon Waller said, look for some trickery. Look, for even not even trickery, but just basically things, some quarterback keeps, uh, some play action, things of that nature. They're going to have to start mixing it up. Interesting, Chris. The Spiders are playing Chad Wiggins some along that defensive line now. He hasn't seen much action in the first two weeks. Newton throws, and the pass is picked up. By the Spiders, Dale Matthews Jr. and down the sideline he goes, hurtling tacklers and out of bounds. Dale Matthews Jr., the redshirt junior from DeMatha High School with his first interception. Look at that. The DMV boys are showing up when they play a team from the DMV. So well read right here. And maybe this is some of the, the, the freshman uh, mistake you see by Newton. Pump fakes. You can't, can't pump fake on a hot three-step route right, right there. Dale steps right in front of it and knows what to do with it from there. Let's see what the flag is on the play. Maybe a block in the back. After the Spiders. interception, illegal block in the back, second team, number three, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. And you could see Tafon kind of knew he did it immediately. He was on the on the ground, kind of pounding the ground. Thought he could get that block. Sometimes you think he got it timed up right, couldn't get in front. But hey, you got the interception, puts the offense back in the back on the field. Had the fumble. See if they can get a drive together here. You never did that as a defensive back when you're trying to throw a block, did you? I, I was always looking to knock somebody out. So I, I, I don't you didn't know. care. It was front back. You were just yeah, looking ahead. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure out the penalty later. <laughs> we'll figure all that out later. Fourth interception for the. The spider defense through the early portion of the schedule and now in the last minute of a first quarter that has been dominated by the spiders richmond takes over and this time with great field position right at the top of the big red spider at midfield tyler wilkins one-on-one -on -one, makes a defender miss picks up more yards drags more tacklers with him that is a strong tough run by the 6'3 junior from lc bird here in richmond tyler wilkins and I, i'll say this chris if you put wilkins out there with cortrell simpson and dejon Brissett, boy does kyle have some weapons he actually he does have some weapons and i'll tell you you're going to continue to see this play until howard makes some adjustments because right now they haven't it. it's it's four five six yards that time 10 yards on that play it's almost like a run play like we say all the time so they're going to continue, continue to run that laletta Looking deep this time. Here he goes for Cortrell Simpson. Knocked away by Trayvon Hunt, the red shirt senior cornerback who did play it very well against Simpson. Yeah, well, well played. And I tell you what, we knew that was going to happen. Kyle likes to take a couple shots a quarter. Hadn't seen him take one yet this quarter. There, there you go right there. And it, you just need to do that, particularly when you're doing the wide receiver screens. You need to keep those guys on the back end honest. They've been playing it soft. They continue to play it soft, so he was in good coverage right there. 50-50 ball there, and give the cornerbacks credit. Trayvon Hunt with a nice play in the end zone. 21 seconds to go, first quarter. Second and 10. Thompson is going to pick up nine yards down to the 30-yard line. He also knocked down the umpire. Somebody should help him up and get some brownie points. There that. you go. <laughs> and that will likely be the last play of the first quarter. The clock is stopped momentarily to make sure our umpire is okay and grabs his baseball cap. Oh, man, he took a hit. He took a shot, but you can see the offensive line is, they're having a great day. They're doing a great job. And again, Deontes Thompson, we see the patience, gets right up in that hole, gets an easy nine yards. A dominating first quarter by the Richmond Spiders. They get the one-yard touchdown run from Deontes Thompson that was set up by the blocked field goal. And then they get the Kyle Valletta to Gordon Collins, six-yard touchdown pass on a seven-yard drive. Now the interception by Dale Matthews, and it's been all Richmond through the first 15 minutes. They've got a 14-0 lead. With Chris Anderson and Sean Robertson, I'm Bob Black and our Spider TV crew, directed by Blake Ellett. We welcome you back to Robin Stadium. 
If you're a Spider fan, you enjoyed that first quarter and you enjoy the start of the second quarter on third and one, just some good old fashioned smash mouth football by that Spider offensive line and Gordon Collins picks up the first down. That might be <laughs> one of Coach Huseman's biggest smiles all season, the way his guys come to the line. I love the quick count. We're not going to waste time. We're not going to do this and that. Come, come to the line. It's a quick count. We're coming straight at you. Short yardage has been a struggle. We've got kind of been finding our way it looks like we got it done on that one just outside the red zone at the howard 21 yard line collins gets it right back and he just keeps those legs churning he got hit about the line of scrimmage and by the time he was done he had picked up oh three four maybe four and a half yards on first down i like what we're doing so far in terms of the running back by committee i know there's you know there's varying opinions on that varying thoughts i think it just takes a, a while for your offensive line your your quarterback to everybody to figure out where their role is and with where, where they're going to come into play but i really like getting a energetic back i like the competition the guys look you know when they get a chance to touch that ball they don't take it for granted you can see it in the way they run the way they they never get a hit and knock backwards second and seven Blitz is coming. Spiders pick it up. Laletta throws incomplete, looking for Deshaun Brissett over there on the far side of the field. Deshaun could not catch that one, one of the few he hasn't caught this year. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm impressed by the, uh, the corner play right now by Howard. Now, true, they do set back deeper than maybe a couple of teams that we've seen, so they're open to some of the shorter routes. But in terms of just over the top, you can tell our defense has made a, co a commitment to stop Phil Yaw. I think they've made a commitment to stop the deep ball. Well, without trying to jinx them, the Spiders are three for three on third down conversions. This is third and seven at the Howard 18-yard line. Maletta through the air to Tyler Wilkins. He's got the first down and more to about the three-yard line. First and goal, Spiders. Let's mark it at the two for Tyler Wilkins. I don't want to say I told you so. But when it's third and medium, everybody's got to know that's the guy to stop um, right there, Tyler Wilkins. And I love the way he's just, he's an expert at working the middle of a field, particularly if you want to play zone. He sits right in there, he picks his place, and makes it easy for the quarterback. And Gordon Collins makes it look easy, untouched, waltzing into the end zone, and the spider domination continues. That's something you're going to see more and more of this year. I guarantee it. Um, you know, coming to the ball, that sounds almost like something that maybe um, a defensive coach like Coach Hughes would put in, like, hey, let's not waste time, guys. Let's get to the line. Let's blow them off the ball and, uh, and go right in it. I'll tell you what I think the Spider coaches will like about this touchdown drive, Chris, is that it came off of a turnover. Dale Matthews got the interception, and the offense turned it into points. And, you know, the first week against Sam Houston State, the offense was really good. The defense was not that great. Correct. The second week, the offense struggled. The defense was really good. And now today, they're meshing on both sides of the ball, offense and defense complementing one another. Got it coming together. Uh, like I said, we said from the beginning, it may not click immediately. It's going to take time, but they're, they're starting to get this thing figured out. That's big Patrick Klebert, the redshirt senior offensive tackle, making his 17th consecutive start. That'll be of some concern here to the Spiders. He's the big fellow, the 6'8", 315-pounder, and hopefully that's not too serious, too severe. We'll keep an eye on it, and maybe Sean will be able to get an update for us from the sideline. It was interesting because initially he was going to try to run off the field on his own so he could almost get there and then you could see his, his uh, teammates say, hey, just take a seat and we'll, you know, be tended to so work it out. So hopefully it's not too serious. Third PAT of the game for Griffin Trow and he misses this one as it clanks off of the right upright. And you could hear the crowd groan just a little bit over that it's actually the second miss of the season for Griff who was perfect in PATs a year ago yeah I, I think the groan was probably more about just being surprised uh, Griff I don't know you know uh, maybe like a pitcher maybe maybe went into a bit of a bit of a slump but he's a guy we still trust and uh, the hole looked good the snap looked good just a little off uh, you know got off went to the right a little bit on him so 
Uh, again, I don't worry about Griff, but I know whatever it is, it's probably more in his head than anything. Well, the great story that Matt Smith on our radio broadcast unearthed last Saturday at Colgate after he missed that first field goal, Russ Huseman was ready to yank him as the kicker. He told Griff, you're out. John Cherison, you're kicking our field goals. And Griff came back to the head coach and said, wait a minute, coach, give me one more chance. I won't miss. I'll get it done for you. And Russ said, okay, you got another chance. And sure enough, Griffin nailed two field goals, 36 yards and 27 yards, and had the game winner for the Spiders last week against Colgate. And that's what I'm talking about. That's why you don't worry too much. We need to get this kickoff together. We've had a couple kickoffs that have been looking like they're going to break. That was another one right there. I saw the same thing you did. Lemonet was picking up speed as he hit the 20-yard line, but then a really good special teams tackle there by Jacob Roberson for the Spiders. It looked like he lost a little shoe, so he's he's definitely running fast if he lost his shoe. I'll tell you what, sometimes when you're on a team where, again, they've scored points, but they've given up points too, you, you start to return kicks, more and more kicks. So you realize that's not just another play, it's an opportunity to score. And you can tell Howard really takes it seriously because every play it looks like they could break one of those kickoffs. I think they're also really frustrated on the offensive side of the ball. Here's Newton trying to go somewhere and there's nowhere to go. Brandon Waller and Colby Ritten sandwich him to make the tackle after about a yard game. So much so, in fact, Chris, that the Bison have gone a lot deeper with their running backs now. Jamal Williams is in the game. Amir Lewis is in the game. Jamal Williams, a bigger back, looks like a bigger body, and uh, we'll see. And he's got the ball coming straight ahead, and he has a little bit of success, but not much. Trey Moore is there on the tackle. Waller again, written. They're having big, big days. You can see on that one, Justin Rubin pops in there, and he's he's in on that tackle. Probably the main person who brought him down. Smaller size for a mid to middle uh, linebacker, but works great for this defense. He's so fast. Remember, he came in as a safety, so he can really move around, cover all the gaps needed to cover. Newton rolls left. Oh, here comes Waller from the blind side. And he has an earth-riveting tackle at the 29-yard line. That's a signature play by Brandon Waller. All the talk last week was Andrew Clyde, Andrew Clyde, Andrew Clyde. I know you think a little bit that that guy got to Brandon Waller and said, hey, don't forget about me because he's having a heck of a day today. There he comes into your picture. Boom. Wow, what a play. And that's just a matter of just staying in your lane. He tracks it down from behind. You want to cut back. That's not what you want to do. You're going to cut right back into big Brandon Waller. Just stay in discipline. Keep it contained and uh, doing a great job. Spiders will get great field position here. We would assume the kick bounces at the Spider 45 and goes out of bounds. They weren't going to give Tyler Wilkins a chance to run it back. And the Spiders are okay with that. They'll get the ball at the 41-yard line with a 20 to nothing lead. 11.31 to go before halftime. It has been all Spiders so far. At the there hasn't been much of concern to the Richmond Spiders to this point. They have played great, but the one concern was the injury to Patrick Klebert on the last drive, and Sean Robertson has an update on Big Patrick. Sean? Guys, it looked like they were attending to his right ankle when he was on the trainer's table. He was stretching it out for about a couple of minutes, but the guys were able to retape it. And when I asked him, would he be ready to go, he gave me a nod saying, yes, I will be back. Now Xavier Goodall is the spider running back, and look at him break tackles, twist and turn, get across midfield, get across the first down marker, and pick up 11 yards on second and third effort. I tell you what, just the amount of talent we have in the backfield is just ridiculous. And I don't care what anybody says about the committee of backs. You got four guys like this, you got to get them on the field, and you got to get the ball in their hands. And I love it right there. You can see the fight, you can see the determination, breaks two or three tackles on that run. From the Howard 48. Laletta over the middle, Simpson, 25, and down to the 24-yard line. Perfectly thrown pass by Kyle Laletta, but I think it's going to go for naught. There's a penalty flag in the spider backfield. Let's see what we have here. Kyle is already walking back as if he knows that it's going to be against the offense. Well, there's no doubt about it. He read that immediately, kind of had a feel of where he wanted to go right now. It's just a four vertical concept, get a peek in, and he hits him right there in stride. Cortrell Simpson on the reception. Now the Spiders are clapping their hands. Maybe it's against Howard. Personal foul, hands to the face. Defense, number 19, half the distance to the goal, automatic. 
about it. First down. Well, if that's Kyle Loletta being wrong, we'll take that. Because it really looked like from Kyle's body language, he was walking back as if there was a holding penalty coming. But instead, Elijah Anglin detected with an illegal hit to the face. So the completion stands to Cortrell Simpson plus the penalty. Yeah, we'll definitely take that. Yeah. Like I said, you could tell that might have been something they even talked about on the sideline because Kyle kind of knew immediately the way he wanted to look off and where he wanted to go. Cortrell Simpson knew how to find the hole in that zone and, and uh, came open easily. So the Spiders are at the Howard 12-yard line. Loletta to Goodall, but this time he is wrapped up in the backfield. Devin Rollins, redshirt senior linebacker from Miami, who's coming off a big game. He had 12 tackles against Kent State. Made a good play in the open field here. Yeah, that's a good old-fashioned uh, coach, and really, you could tell right off the bat, uh, he's well-coached, technique is great. Goodall never really had a chance uh, that he sniffed that out. And a great play by them. Nine-yard loss on the reception. Loletta fires to Caleb Drake, who makes the catch and hangs on to the football, even though he got hit by Brian Cook, the freshman cornerback, as soon as he caught it. Just trying to, uh, you know, going for the shore where he didn't really want to hold on to it. You can tell right now Kyle wants to get rid of it. Probably just trying to make this a more uh, attainable third down play. Makes it a little bit shorter, I guess, third and 12, third and 13 on this one. Yeah, the Spiders had that nine-yard loss on the completion to Goodall, number two right there on your screen. Weird stat for Xavier Goodall. He now has two receptions for minus 15 yards this year. <laughs> he lost six on a catch last week, and he lost nine on that catch just a moment ago. And now the Spiders a little disjointed on the third down play, so they're going to second. use their second Full timeout. timeout. Thank you, well, we Mr. Talked about Warren Gillies, our referee. <laughs> We talk about coaches, we talk about watching film. When you when you see that, he has two receptions for negative yardage. I can bet it's probably just one of those things where coaches have watched the film. Nine times out of ten, we're throwing it to him. It's on some type of screen look. So you got linebackers like on that play who are keying it up, spying it up, and that's what they're looking for. Uh, it be interesting to see where you kind of where you go down here. It's third and twelve. But it's an interesting third and 12 because you're in the red zone. So it's it's, it's more difficult than it is out here uh, maybe at the 50 or you just don't have as much room. The DBs are going to be sitting because they know you can't go deep. So maybe some draws, screens. We'll see how they play it. Spiders so far on third down are four for four. So I don't want to jinx them. You, wanna... you just did. You just did. I didn't last time. So <laughs> don't tell Russ Huseman on me if they don't get it on this one. Well, speaking of Russ Huseman, earlier you heard from Mike London talking about Russ Huseman, who was his defensive coordinator on the national title team in 08. So let's return the favor. Here's Spider head coach Russ Huseman talking about Mike London. And then I coached with him the one year, uh, his first year here. So, yeah, we do. Uh, we've coached together. I think he was at William and Brown, I'm not even sure, maybe two years and then one year here. But, yeah, I know Mike very well. Uh, you know, we've stayed in touch through the years. And uh, great guy and excellent football coach. And now Russ Huseman Spiders at third and 12 at the Howard 14. Let's see what they've called up here. Well, another whistle before the play. And now it's Howard that will use a timeout. Time so the game has slowed a little That's bit here with 9.33 to go. And <laughs> Chris, to play a little you know, chess here. Uh, Russ, Russ Huseman was talking yesterday, and I actually said to him, are you tired of answering the question about Mike London coming back? He, he said, no, not really. It's college football. It's, it's kind of what it's all about. I understand it's one of the storylines, but... When the game begins, it's not about the guys on the sidelines. It's about the guys between the sidelines. And so far, Russ has got to be thrilled with today's effort. Yeah, I love it. I love the way he kind of played it down. Like, yeah, we, we worked together that one year. <laughs> like, they didn't do something pretty magical, like win the first national championship at University of Richmond in 2008 in that one year. So uh, just you see the humility there. I think there's a lot of respect between these guys. Uh, when we talk about the, the nature of coaching, um, you know, you, you got your wife at home, and it's almost like you're married to your coaching staff and these players, particularly during the season. So these guys have been in the trenches. They've worked through it, and uh, it, it, I'm sure they, they appreciate uh, the, the opportunity to compete against each other. Russ, of course, spent eight years at his alma mater at Chattanooga, turned that program away, very similar to the way Mike London is trying to turn around the Howard program. When Russ got to Chattanooga, they weren't very good, and he wound up going 59-37. and 37. Three Southern Conference titles, three postseason appearances. They've won games in the postseason 
every year they win. He did a marvelous job of his alma mater. It would have taken a special place for him to leave Chattanooga. And he has said that, that this is that special place. All right. Third and 12 from the Howard 14. Laletta to the end zone. Simpson, touchdown. Boy, Trell Simpson with his second touchdown catch of the year. Kyle Laletta, his second touchdown pass today, his seventh of the season, and the beat rolls on for the Spiders. My goodness, man. We just take so much for granted with Kyle Laletta back there. If we get, we get a chance to look at it, you'll see he just stands in there. No problem. He knows he's going to get rushed. He knows he's going to get hit, but he knows where he wants to go with the ball. We talked about that pregame, um, you know, just knowing where you want to go and what you want to do. He looks off the safety, comes back. It's a dig route right across. It's a, in the nose. Doesn't try to lead him, puts it right on him, and that's what it required to really complete that play of making a touchdown. Three catches, 49 yards today now for Cortrell Simpson and Griffin Trow. This time, line drives the PAT through. So another impressive spider scoring drive. This one, five plays, 59 yards in two minutes and three seconds. And Kyle Laletta hits Cortrell Simpson with a 14-yard touchdown pass and it's 27 nothing spiders here's the touchdown and you can see right there he's getting pressure just sitting in there he only had he knew he had one receiver coming across the middle it's Cortrell Simpson Cortrell does a good job he sprints across but he starts to slow down as he comes across the middle there's that hole that gap right there in the zone and I tell you it had to be drilled could not be floated could not be thrown across there softly Kyle steps in knows he's gonna get hit drills it right in there Here's the other thing I think the Spiders will really like about that scoring drive, Chris, and it might be a little thing, but it's a big thing to them. They did that one without Patrick Klebert on that offensive line, and you could see on the replay, Big 78, Blaine Markham, the redshirt junior out of Lynchburg, getting a chance through a couple of great protective blocks to give Laletta the opportunity to throw that ball. And depth has been something uh, within the offensive line that has been discussed since the spring. They knew they needed to find that, had lost a couple great ones last year, needed to find not just a starting five, but some depth. Lemonade back to the 20 and out to the 25-yard line where the Howard Bison will start first and 10. And uh, boy, they didn't see this type of opponent probably in either of their first two games. You know, certainly UNLV, who they beat. And then last week, Kent State was a one possession game and Howard had the ball with about a minute to go with a chance to tie, but they have been totally dominated today. I think it's a couple things. I think number one, you're dealing with those may have been FBS programs, but not particularly winning programs. So I think you're dealing with a lot of guys who know how to win. These guys, have, these fighters have had a lot of success, particularly this senior class. So they just know how to win. They know how to approach a game. Newton gang tackled again. Trey Moore is in there. Colby Ritten is in there. Name we've called a lot today. Andrew Clyde as well. So just rallying to the ball, recognizing what you need to do to be successful against this team. Yeah, they got they got great backs and a great quarterback. Uh, one guy tackling, that's not the answer. You need to have multiple hats to the ball. Newton will try to throw, and that one's deflected and intercepted. Dale Matthews down the sideline and gets horse collared and saved a touchdown. Again, doing a great job reading the young quarterback. He sees his pass right now. There's no play action, so he buzzes right now. And he can step, step right in front of it. I'm not sure who got their hands on it, but when it tips, takes a little speed off of that ball, makes it an easy catch. And you can see the, the horse collar at the end. That's a pretty simple call for the ref as well. That'll put it really close to that end zone. Really close, being about the four-yard line. See if we can see who deflected this. Is that Trey Moore, maybe? Might have been Colby Ritten, actually. Let's see if we get another angle from our terrific Spider TV crew. Kind of hard to tell. Whoever it is, it, they move like lightning. <laughs> <laughs> we just see a blue streak, a hand go up, and also and the ball comes off tip just a little bit. So, uh, again, you can tell the Richmond defense has a good feel of what Howard wants to do, what they're trying to do, and our guys are just prepared. And, like, no knock on, like I said, the UNLV, UNLV or Kent State, great programs, but there's something about a team that, that consistently has won in the past. They know how to prepare, and we just look really prepared. 
all due respect, Howard is playing its third away game. That was going to be my next point yeah. as well. It's got to get fatiguing just getting on the road. And this was a bus trip. No, no flight on this one. Laletta rolls. Laletta throws. Laletta hits Porter Abel for the Spider touchdown. I'll tell you what, Laletta just keeps, he's, he's hot today. I mean, he is on early and often. That He put that ball where nobody could get to it, um, you know, but Porter Abel. And uh, he comes out, he's patient. There's a rush there, so it's not like he's being rushed. He knows exactly where he wants to, get, wants to go. Really throws it before Porter is completely out of his break. Porter just gets enough space to, uh, to go ahead and close that out and score a touchdown. And there's another name you could add to the receiving list. Porter Abel, his fourth catch of the year and from our goalpost cam you can see griffin trowell's pat split the uprights and the spiders turn another turnover into more points this time it's the second interception of the game for dale matthews who takes it all the way back with the penalty to the four yard line and then it takes kyle Loletta. just one play the touchdown pass to porter abel to make it 34 nothing From Robin Stadium with Chris Anderson and Sean Robertson, Bob Black back with you. A dominating first half by the Richmond Spiders on both sides of the ball. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, we're all a, a bit surprised. I, I thought the Spiders would play well. We've been on the road first two games, and so nothing like coming home. You're familiar. You don't have that stress of getting, in the, getting on the plane. You, you kind of get in the uh, feel of doing your classes, and you're back at it. Up the sideline for Howard is Jordan Scott returning this kickoff. Gets it out to about the 30-yard line. And let's see how the Howard offense reacts to this. At this, at this point, it's pretty simple. You got to settle your freshman quarterback down. You don't want to, you know, make this, this situation any uglier. So you want to go to what you're doing, run the ball. You've got Phil Y'all, even though we're keying on him, he's still your guy. He's still the guy on your offense with NFL potential. You got to figure out a way to get him the ball. And I'm sure the Spiders will be keying on him. Newton looks to throw. Oh, Waller missed him, but Dale Matthews Jr. and Trey Morgan, they sandwich the quarterback at the 29-yard line. That'll be a quarterback sack for the Spider defense. I'll tell you what, Dale Matthews is ready today. Like I said, he's another DMV guy uh, showing up, ready to play against these guys. He probably has a couple people he knows on the Howard team. He's trying to get interviewed after the game. <laughs> Newton throwing long, but too long, and good coverage there by the Spiders defensively. Trent Williams, a sophomore out of Thomas Dale, getting some action, and a chance here, Chris, I think, for the Spider coaches to get some guys some playing time. I know we're not even halfway through the second quarter, but I think you could see some new names and faces out there today. Well, Trent Williams has been in the rotation all season long. He might come in every third or fourth drive. I think he does a great job, particularly in man, to co man coverage. I think he's strong there, so we'll probably see more and more of him. Kalen Newton got blindsided as he went to make that pass, and it fell between the hash marks and not a white jersey near it, and it's a quick three and out. Micah Keels and the Spider defense doing it again. Yeah, wanted to take a shot uh, against Tapon Manson, trying to get to Ezard. Ezard's their, their blazer. He's got a lot of speed, but you can see once again, he was under a ton of pressure and really wasn't able to step into that throw at all. Been a tough first half for Mike London. You saw the shot of the Howard coach with that frown look on his face and, and another punt. And, you know, I'm sure he wouldn't admit it. Nobody would say it. But, but you know, when you're in, in the process of kind of changing the culture of a program, you're going to have your days where you're up and you're going to have when your days where you're off, days where you're on, days when you're off. And this is one of those things where, hey, now you're on the radar. You go be in a UNLV, you're on the radar. You go to Kent State and you almost pull up an, ups, an upset against another FBS team, you are on the radar. Every team is looking out for you, and you can tell the Spiders did not take them for granted at all. You're on the radar of a lot of people. Mike was telling me this week after the UNLV game, of course, all of D.C. was a buzz about Howard football for the first time in forever. And all of a sudden, who showed up at Howard's football practice but the Reverend Jesse Jackson? Absolutely. Came, I, came to practice. <laughs> this watch spoke to the team Mike told me this week he said he sounded just like he was given a sermon in church when he <laughs> spoke to our guys it was riveting so I mean they've, they've gotten some great dividends out of what they've done so far today isn't going to be one of their more memorable efforts you wouldn't think 
I can tell you something for me. Uh, one of the things Kayla Newton said is, hey, I'm going to Howard. We announced he's going to Howard. He said, we're not a football school. And then he put dot, 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 yet. And I can tell you what, today I was looking at just to get notes, get prepared. I type in Howard. And usually the next word is university. First time ever, Howard football pops up mm. the next time. So they're on their way. They're doing some things. Like I said, today not off to the best start, but I think a lot of it has to do with the Richmond Spiders. So that's how you know when you've arrived, huh? When you can type in on Google. You're doing and something. And it shows up before you even finish typing. There you go. Blitz coming. Lauletta throwing. What a strong arm throw there to Porter. Abel who breaks tackles. Comes down the sideline. Fakes left. Goes right. It's a foot race. At the 20. At the 10. At the 5. He stays on his feet. And he's into the end zone for a spectacular touchdown run by Porter Abel after the catch. Put that on Porter Abel's highlight reel. How many tackles did he break on that? A simple catch. A simple out route. A great route. Gets right up the sideline. He must have kicked out of three or four tackles as he makes his way up the field. Here's a catch. Looks like he should be tackled there. Oh, no. Kicks out of two, two right there. There's a third. On down the field. And there, there's the last one. Does he have one more? <laughs> I counted five on that one. I tell you what, I don't know where you learned that. I don't know if that's a drill, but it, but it should be now. The Porter Abel drill. Great job by him. Wow, you've named a drill after him. That's that was, how you know you've arrived. That was outstanding effort. It's one thing to get the catch. It's another thing to finish it like that. And the PAT is good. And aren't the Spiders having some fun now? How about that catch and run by number eight, the red shirt senior Porter Abel out of Lexington. Add his name to that list on the wide receiving core. It is something special to watch. I tell you what, you're right. Add his name on there. It's already on there. He's a he's a leader. He's a senior. I just like his boys. He makes big plays at big times. And this is just this is just one more time. Check that out. And, and I think this again, you have to attribute that to the deep receivers. You know, Kyle's going to spread the ball. You're going to get your opportunity, but maybe not a lot of them. So when you get your chance, you do that. That's exactly what you do. You get up that sideline and break five tackles. So impressive by Porter. Really proud of that kid. And uh, he's come out ready to play. And so have the Richmond Spiders reflected on the scoreboard at 41 nothing, with still 6.56 to go here in the second quarter. I know it's early in the game, but it's it's hard to ignore and start, you know, stop thinking about, uh, you know, Kyle Aletta's numbers already. Uh, one of the reasons he's been able to pick up those big numbers in the first couple of games is they've been close games where he's had to throw the ball. I mean, we've, we've needed points the entire game, so he's been managing that offense. Not sure if he's going to play a full four quarters today so far. <laughs> John Cherison's getting a workout as the Spider kickoff specialist. And he sends this one down to about the two-yard line, and Scott, with some good speed, just went north-south and gets across the 30 and up to the 32. So your point's well taken, Chris, on Kyle, but he's 16 of 19 now for 190 yards and four touchdown passes today. He is closing in on the school record. Now he needs seven more touchdown passes to be the Spiders' all-time leading touchdown passing quarterback. And I tell you, with the... Uh the weapons he has out here, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I'm not going to say expected, but it's definitely doable. Right. He got 70 yards on that pass, but he will thank Porter Abel for those 65 seven, of yeah. them. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Here's Phil Yaw again and again. He's got nothing. There's Andrew Clyde that time. He wants to get on camera and his name mentioned and Colby written. What a game that redshirt freshman is playing. Redshirt freshman, Spider fans. Yeah, you're seeing a bunch of fresh faces. You've got uh, Marcus Vincent is in uh, defensive back. He's gotten play on all the special teams. Glad to see him out there. I just like the rotation we're starting to get uh, with our defensive backs. Kind of wish you could go back and wish you had that maybe when you were playing that first game with Sam Houston. But now you're starting to see fresh bodies in here in that defensive back. Everybody's covered on that play. Fresh body for Howard is Kalen Johnson Sr., who's coming to the game at quarterback for Kalen Newton. So Mike London has changed quarterbacks. This has been a learning experience for the freshman Newton, and he's going to learn a little from the sideline now. And it's really a tough situation because we've obviously stopped the run. We, we guys are filling their ears back now because they're looking for the pass. This is a tough situation for any quarterback, particularly a true freshman. So they bring the senior in, and Johnson played significant time last year, and Newton won the job in summer camp. 
Johnson under a tremendous rush, and down he goes. Pick one of those spiders. They were in on the tackle. Brandon Waller got up off the bottom of it, but Andrew Clyde started it. Yeah, Andrew Clyde's in there, too. I don't know if he made the sack, but he definitely started the party, and uh, a rack of people came to join him. There's Kobe Ritten again getting off the bottom. Brandon Waller getting off the bottom. So those three guys are having a game. I think they felt the challenge uh, coming in, and then they're just starting to come into their own. I know they've been asked to do a lot by Coach Huseman and defensive uh, defensive staff, and they've answered the challenge today. And another punt with 5.40 to go before halftime. And the Spiders will let that one bounce, and even the bounce of the football is going the Spiders' way today. Chris, I'm just looking back at Howard's drives in this game. After they had that 10-play drive that resulted in the block field goal, they have either been three and out every time or they've had a turnover. And I'm telling you, that that's what's most impressive to me. Obviously, you know, the offense looks great. They're starting to find a rhythm and realize what they want to do. Kyle looks great. Uh, we've seen all four running backs at this, at this point, and they've all had a level of success. But the thing that's, that's most impressive to me today is the play, the stellar play of that defense particularly the, the front four, just recognizing, hey, if we win this game, it's going to be because we were able to stop the run. And, and nobody's been able to do that thus far. UNLV hasn't stopped them. Kent State hasn't stopped them. And to step up and, and make that uh, your thing to do this today, they've done a great job. Great field position at the Howard 48-yard line. This is Brissett on the jet sweep around right to left. And he gets spun down at about the 42-yard line. I know what you're saying. But this is a spider offense that has over 310 yards already in the first half. And if you tell us that we'd be up, you'd be tell us, if you told us we would be up 41 to nothing and Brissett has touched the ball, what, twice now? Yeah. <laughs> we'd probably say, I, I don't know about that. I, I, don't, I don't believe that. He's a lead receiver in the country. And at, that, that, at this point, they're just trying to get him the ball. Well, Deshaun Brissett, 20 receptions, 317 yards coming into the game, as you said, leading FCS. So we decided to focus on him this week and you'll see that video feature coming up at halftime garrett hudson with the catch for another spider first down and, and it's a really neat feature we kind of let deshaun be his own guy and show a little bit of a more personal side of him we just put him on the football field and let him walk around and talk about the first two games and his first two years and where he is now so i think you'll enjoy that our spider tv feature with deshaun Brissett coming up at halftime He'll give you a little bit of his, a feel of his story. What I like also about uh, Dejan Brissett is he never just talks about himself. Um, he always gives a lot of credit to the entire offense. Uh, he speaks uh, a lot about Kyle. He talks about his other receivers. And he talks about the play of this offensive line. They've shown up today as well. You know, again, you've got four backs, and they're all running well. But there have been holes to run there and are created by this offensive line. I know last week was particularly special for Dejan Brissett. This is Cortrell Simpson. He's pretty special today. He gets inside the 10 and down to the 8. Another reception for Simpson. His fourth of the game. He's already got a touchdown catch. And there's a play action where they did not bite on the fake at all. There's pressure right there. Kyle actually gets hit as he's thrown, and, and it doesn't matter. It's still right there on the money. Uh, look, he makes the pitch and catch look easy, but trust me, it is not. He just has a good feel of what he wants to do and where he's trying to go. Just to finish the story on Brissett, you know, he's a Canadian from Ontario, so last week at Colgate, his mom made a five-hour drive to come see him play, and his brother, O'Shea, is a freshman basketball player at Syracuse, about an hour from Colgate, and he was in the stands to watch his brother Deshaun grab 12 catches for 159 yards. So it was really a cool game last week for Deshaun Brissett. I think what's interesting about both teams here is like you take for granted like these are two academically strong schools. So you're going to get kids who drive, who come from states and states away to, to come to these universities. Uh, Howard has people from California. I think Philly is from California. They have guys from Florida. You go and you drive those distances to go to great caliber schools. But the thing is your family they might not get to see you play very often. So that was a big deal for Brissett last week. It was great to hear that story. Second and goal at the six. Laletta to Jay Palmer. That will be the fifth touchdown pass of the game by Kyle Laletta. This one, it's Jay Palmer on the receiving end. Great job 
by Jay Palmer. Excited for him getting the end zone. And I know we've been talking about Brissett, and I know we talked about his receiving, but if you get a chance to look at the replay, look how long Brissett holds the, the back, the uh, defensive back with this block. I mean, Jay's two yards in deep into the end zone. Brissett's still blocking. So this offense is clicking. They're believing in each other. Even on that, he knows he's not getting the ball. Jay, easy touchdown. Great catch. Way to finish that run. Touchdown. The PAT by Griffin Trowell is up and good. So a six-play, 48-yard drive. Just took two minutes and 58 seconds. And Kyle Valletta now 20 of 23, 234 yards. And for the second time this season, he has thrown five touchdown passes. And it's 48-0 Richmond. I'll tell you what, again, <laughs> I just don't think anybody saw this coming. Uh, I knew the Spiders uh, were good, but, you know, uh, this team, uh, Howard team, it looked so good. I just think uh, they kind of just, just ran into something today. And uh, the Spiders are ready. They're back at home in front of their crowd. You got to see a red. You can tell you've got, they've got their, their students have shown up in droves. So our guys just look ready to play today. Hey, coming up at halftime, Sean Robertson will talk with head coach Russ Huseman live as Russ leaves the field to go to the locker room. I can't help but think, Chris, and it's kind of funny, but the first two weeks on radio, you know, Matt <laughs> Smith talks with Russ, and he's been spitting bullets each of the first two weeks. There have been things in the first half at Sam Houston State and at Colgate he just didn't like, and he let Matt know about it. Sean's getting off easy this week. It's 48 nothing. He really is. He Before halftime, he's going to get a big hug from the head coach. I don't know if you remember before that Sam Houston game, we had the pregame meeting. One of the first things he said is, hey, guys, I, I, I wear my, my emotions on my sleeves now, so when you, when you talk to me, be, be ready. Lemonade with the return out to about the 38-yard line. Give Howard pretty good field position. So anyway, you will hear from Russ Huseman going into the locker room, and then we will challenge Sean a little bit more. He will speak with Mike London coming out of the Howard locker room at the end of halftime. That probably, Sean, won't be quite as enjoyable a conversation as the one you're going to have with Russ in 2 minutes and 27 seconds. Yeah, he's definitely getting off easy. I was going to say, it was going to be a pretty easy interview with Coach Miley the entire time I talked to him at halftime. On first down, again, not much doing for the Bison. A gain of two. This is a Howard team that's first in the MEAC, 11th in the nation in rushing, and so far today they have a paltry 20 yards rushing. And you can see, again, we're continuing to get fresh bodies in there. Madison Day has been uh, working in with those linebackers. He's in now. I think he was in on that stop along with Justin Rubin. Second and eight. Phil Yaw looking to turn the corner to the sideline. He gets down that sideline and is finally shoved out of bounds. Madison Day and Lamont Johnson eventually making the tackle. Yeah, Lamont Johnson, that was one of the first times we saw Phil Yaw in kind of a one-on-one -on -one tackling situation with Lee, Lamont Johnson. And Lamont is able to just kind of slow him up and get help, get him knocked out of bounds. From the 47, this is Desmond Wortham on the carry. Gets to about the 44. We're under two minutes to go here in the first half. I'll tell you what, we have some good backs. We talk about our stable of ba backs. Howard has a great stable of backs mm -hmm. as well. Timeout for an injured Howard player. Looks like one of their offensive linemen has gone down. We mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, this is the last of the non-conference schedule for both of these teams. They'll go into conference play next week. And, Chris, the schedule's really worked out pretty well now for the Spiders. Tough start with the Sam Houston Absolutely. State and Colgate games on the road. But this is a stretch of three straight home games in four weeks. There's a bye week as well. And Richmond will open conference play here next Saturday evening at 6 o'clock against Elon, a team that has struggled in the past couple of years but seems to be getting better this year. But that'll be a good opener for the Spiders here at home. And then they get an Albany team after a bye week that's expected to do some things in the CAA this year. Yeah, Elon is, uh, you know, I don't think they're a surprise to people who really follow the CAA. They've had a uh, tough couple of years, but they've had freshmen and sophomores running around the field. So now those freshmen and sophomores are juniors and seniors. And uh, just looking, they got a big win last week against Furman. So I'm looking for some uh, a tough team to come in here next week. Howard opens MEAC play next week at home. They finally get a home game, Bethune-Cookman, 1 o'clock up in D.C. will be their home opener and their conference opener. And we'll see how Mike London 
Gets his guys to shake this one off. The Spiders up 48. Nothing before halftime. Kalen Johnson looking to throw. Zips it over the middle and a leaping catch is made by Guy Lemonade. Inside the Spider 35 and down to about the 30-yard line. I'll tell you what, Guy Lemonade is having a good game yeah. between uh, his uh, kickoff returns and now here as a receiver. There's a flag on the play. Personal foul. Roughing the pass. Defense. Number 26. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. So that Howard offense is going to get a little help with that penalty. It's like a roughing the passer penalty. I don't think I'm speaking like a coach necessarily here, Chris, but I almost think that's a good thing right now. Not penalty on Trey Moore. You don't want to do that. But let's challenge the spider defense in the red zone here. See if you can keep him out of the end zone. Phil Yaw on the carry on first down. He got a few yards, but you can see how the Spiders are gang tackling him. And that's the big difference. Chad Wiggins comes in and he has the first opportunity at him. And he just, uh, you know, doesn't get on him, but does make him cut back into the flow of traffic. Cuts him back right there. And, and there you have, a, you know, just a slew of uh, Spiders ready to make a tackle. I think you have Lee Johnson in there, Andrew Clyde. Second and seven, and that pass knocked away nicely by Marcus Vincent. You talked about him earlier. I'm telling the you. The true freshman out of Damascus, Maryland. You really like him, don't you? People, keep your eyes on him. That is a name that we will hear. He's playing as a true freshman. I like him. I like Springs as well. You've got two true freshmen running around your defensive backfield right now. Now, we may hate that. we got to get rid of him in, in a couple of years. But right now, it's, it's hard not to be excited about those two. Well, don't rush him. Not a couple of years. Four years. <laughs> there they you just go. Get, they just getting started they're young pups here's phil yaw again to the 10 and maybe to the nine madison day on the tackle uh, coach usman was talking about those guys chris at the radio show uh thursday and he said you know they really feel good that they got both of those guys and they were able to come in here and recruit those two two freshmen samari springs and marcus vincent absolutely they you know samari springs were on him kind of late and uh caught on to him and he's played well Jackson throws it up in the air, and it's knocked away by Jerry Jordan, although there's a penalty flag in the end zone. And J.J. may get caught for a little push-off there. I don't know what we're doing here. You can see both it. guys kind of going back and forth, kind of competing. And I always look at the receiver. When the receiver doesn't look around for a flag, <laughs> you know, that's usually a sign. Smoking like a great defensive back. <laughs> So let's hear from Warren Gillis, our referee, on the call with the flag in the end zone. Hold it. Defense, number one. At the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. Let's take a look at it here. Up in the air. It's hard to see, but I, both guys are competing. It looks like he swipes through at the last minute. You know, as a defensive back, as a corner, you, you just got to take that. And sometimes you roll with it. You don't change your technique at all. I think a lot of that is situational as well. From the four, first and goal, and it's the quarterback, Jackson, keeping it himself, and he gets to about the two-yard line. Howard has a couple of timeouts to use, and we'll take one of them here with 18 seconds to go. Again, I just think this is a great challenge. Timeout. I do, too. Howard. For the Spider That's defense. Their second full timeout. It's probably not going to matter in the eventual outcome of the game at this point. 48 nothing Richmond, but you know the Adam Braithwaite, the Spiders' defensive coordinator, who was with Russ Huseman for five years at Chattanooga. He will challenge that defensive unit to keep him out of the end zone, just like the Howard guys and their offensive coordinator, Brennan Marion, will challenge him to get in the end zone. And you throw in the fact that you've got a bunch of young guys mixed in there as well. So they, they aren't always in the game, particularly in this situation. So it's an opportunity to shine. This is your goal line defense drill that you do in practice this all the time only hey it's the real deal with a packed house sold out house here to check you out and uh i just want to see who's going to step up and make that play and i'm sure with that's what coaches are saying in that huddle saw a shot of that howard sideline one of their assistant coaches is mike london jr uh coach london's son opportunity to coach with dad get you know cut your teeth a little bit at the collegiate level <laughs> I bet those are some interesting stories. Oh, man. Phil Yaw just gang tackled. Again, it was Brandon Waller who started the charge. Lee Johnson was in there as well. Timeout. Howard. That's the final timeout. I love it. There's nothing there for Brandon Waller. He strikes right through. They try to get a hat on him, get their face across the front. That doesn't happen. I think the thing about Brandon, he's big, he's strong, but he's extremely fast. A lot, a lot of times he's quicker than those offensive linemen. Gets his face across the front and then has some help with the cleanup from Lee Johnson. 
I had asked Mike London this week, Chris, you know, why'd you take the Howard job? You've been a head coach at UVA, you were at Maryland, Power 5, FBS, associate head coach. Why drop down to a Howard? And, and he said, and he said, it's not the level of the job, it's the level of influence you have on young men. And that's something that Mike has always preached. Always. And he admitted he had a chance for his son to coach with him. He really liked that idea. Um, relatively local to the D.C. area with, with being from, you know, the 757 area code. So he just thought it was the right fit. I love that. And as, as, a, as a player who was here at Richmond when he was here as an assistant, like that response, there, there's no surprise here for me. He, like I said, he's a, he's a voice of men type of guy. He's a guy, kind of kind of guy you want around your kid. 12 seconds to go in the half. Howard's out of timeouts. Jackson will hand it off straight ahead, and Desmond Wortham has his first touchdown of the season and Howard's first touchdown of the game. So well-executed play on that one. Not sure what the uh, Spiders might have. They just came out and spread us out a little bit. Didn't allow us to, to put all those heavy hitters up in the middle. Spread us around, out and, uh, you know, able to go right inside, right to the middle. And you know what? That was a little bit of a gamble by Mike London and his staff because they were out of timeouts. If he didn't get in there, that was going to be it. They weren't going to get another play. The clock would have wound down. So they pound it in. They'll feel a little better going into the locker room at halftime. And the extra point by Dakota Lebowski is good. He's a perfect 10 for 10 for the first two and a half games of the year. And with nine seconds to go before the break, Howard is on the board at 48 to 7. Yeah, but you talked about, uh, you know, Coach London coming to Howard and making that decision. Like I said, I'm just just not surprised uh, when I had an opportunity to play to play uh, he coached, I believe, the defensive uh, defensive ends, outside linebacker, or something of that nature. And so we were on the same side of the ball as the defensive back. And just uh, he was a motivator. Uh, he was an awesome recruiter. And, uh, and when it just came down to having his guys ready, there was no doubt his guys were going to be ready. Uh, I'll tell you, the great Jasmine Coleman, I believe he had an opportunity oh. to, 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 oh. to play under uh, under uh, Coach London. Uh, so I think they have a great relationship. And, uh, you know, just, I don't know, people talk about it. And even when you look at his ascension from being here and, you know, coach, then being a head coach and, and going to on to UVA, it's just people are surprised. And, and I'm not when you hear the story and you understand him as a man and even get back to his experience as a police officer. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I've ever heard the word great and Jasmine Coleman group together, but your point is well taken. You heard it here first. He helped me get this job, so man, <laughs> that was part of the payoff. I gotta say Jasmine Coleman and great a couple times a year. He didn't tell you that he didn't want you to get this job? He did not? No. no he I did. meant so-so Jasmine Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Spiders will get a return at a kickoff here. It's Cortrell Simpson. Not going to be able to spin out of that tackle. And the uh, clock operator, I will give him credit for, for, for being a very honest guy. <laughs> it clicked down to one. I don't think anybody in the stadium would have minded if he'd had a slow trigger finger and he just let that clock wind down. <laughs> uh, so the Spiders will have to take one snap with one second to go. This will be, uh, be an interesting conversation for both coaches, honestly, uh, at, at halftime. Uh, London, at this point, you know, your team has been not just in it, but really, you know, just in it and, and really planning on, on winning the game the last two times. So this is different here for the Spiders. We haven't been ahead like this, so it'll be interesting. Just different ground, different area for both coaches at halftime. Kyle Laletta will indeed uh, take a knee to bring the first half to a close and a That's dominating the end of the first, half. first half performance by the Richmond Spiders with a 48 to 7 advantage over the Howard Bison. They have dominated on both sides of the football. They have racked up 355 yards offensively given up only 134 defensively. Let's find out what Spider head coach Russ Huseman thought about that first half. Sean? With head coach Russ Huseman, I saw you on the sideline on that last drive before halftime. You were happy for about 29 minutes until the last score happened. Well, we, uh, you know, I actually had a feeling they were going to try to run the ball there. They were either going to throw the fade or run the ball. We didn't play the run very well, so, um, you know, that's disappointing. But um, for the most part, I mean, we got the ball to a lot of people offensively. We made some plays offensively. You know, defensively, we played really well early until that last drive. But uh, you, there's not a whole lot you can complain about right now. You were able to run the football, and that was something you mentioned before the game. 
Well, you know, when you start, when you do the perimeter run stuff with the, you know, flipping, some of those look like runs, but we're flipping it to them, so it's really pass yardage. But, you know, you, when you get it on a perimeter like that, it helps because it, it, it's, it widens them out a little bit and then lets you run it inside. And, you know, all, uh, you know, all our backs, other than the fumble down there, all the guys are running hard. Coach, thanks for the time. Good luck to you in the second half. Thank you. Appreciate it. Big lead now for the Richmond Bears, 48-7 over Bob, back to you. A subdued but happy spider head coach, Russ Hughes. It's almost like he sounded disappointed. <laughs> he said, you know, not a lot to complain about, but, you know, except for that last drop. So he's a perfectionist. None, nonetheless, that, that's kind of who he is. We're glad to have him. And uh, we're going to continue to see how we uh, continue in his second half. Dale Matthews Jr. with two interceptions. Kyle Laletta with five touchdown passes. Back with our lumber late liquidators halftime show coming up. With Richmond leading Howard 48 to 7. Scoreboard shows Richmond way up on Howard 48 to 7. So let's take a look at the stats. Which one do you like better, Chris? 353 of total offense or 134 microscopic number total defense. I know where you're going. You being, know where I'm going. A D guy, yeah, right? You know where I'm going, and Coach Huseman is a D guy, too, and I know this is something he wanted to see. 134 total offensive yards is impressive, particularly when you're talking about an offense that had put up, you know, 30-plus uh, points in their last two games against FBS opponents. So coming in here, you're, you're, you're weary of, man, how, just how good are they? You know they're they're pretty good, and uh, to come in and, and to make that stop, uh, you know, make that stand right up front. That's the one that stands out to me, Bob. Well, speaking of points and stats, I'll be the offensive guy here. The 34 points the Spiders scored in the quarter and the 48 in the first half are the most in program history against a Division I opponent. It's been great offensively. It's been great defensively. It was a great first half for the Richmond Spiders who lead Howard 48 to set more coming up from robin stadium here in just a moment we will talk with howard head coach mike london it was not a great first half for him but we'll get his impressions and what he's looking for in the second half when we come back in just a moment Time winding down here at beautiful Robbins Stadium, the eighth year, hard to believe, of football already here at Robbins Stadium for the Richmond Spiders, who lead the Howard Bison 48 to 7 at the halftime break. A first half dominated by Richmond. Get some comments from Howard head coach Mike London. He's standing by with Sean Robertson down on the field. Sean, head coach Mike. Other than the early part of the first half, that last drive, it seemed like it gave you a little bit of momentum going into the locker room. We, I, got to settle down and just, uh, you know, be, play basic fundamental football. You know, we're so worried about things that we can't control. We got to control the things that we can control. Same like times in the red zone, they wait fourth down stops on you like the kind of swung their way at that point. Down situation and they're converting, which leads to points obviously. Coach, I appreciate the time to you in the second half. Thank you. Head coach Mike London, Bob back. All right, Sean, thank you. Apologize for a little bit of the uh, technical issues there, audio-wise, getting getting Mike on camera and getting him on the air. Uh, uh, what do you tell your guys in the locker room, Chris, in a situation like this, whether you're Mike London way behind or even if you're Russ Huseman way ahead? Uh, I think uh, we caught a little bit of what Coach London said, and, and I think what he was basically saying is we need to get back to fundamental football. Um, you know, what, what are we good at? Where we had success? Where do we need to grow? Uh, stop worrying about, you know, outside factors that don't matter. It's, you know, we're not exiting and Owen. We're Jimmy and Joe at this point. I, I need my guys to show up. I want to find out what type of character you have. Uh, if you're Coach Huseman in there with the Spiders, I just think, you know, it's 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 more the same. It's, okay, guys, this, this is great, a great first half, but, you know, they don't give trophies out at halftime, right? So you want to be a great team. you got to learn how to put a full game together. Uh, you're going to get a chance to see some younger guys who don't get to play a lot. This is your opportunity. This is your chance. Let's, you know, let's get something done. Let's learn something. Let's get better out here. As we said, kind of a record-setting 
first half for the Spiders, the 35 points in the second quarter and the 48 points in the first half already. A program record against a Division I opponent. A lot of highlights in the first half. Kyle Laletta was 20 of 23, 234 yards and five touchdowns through the air. And then on the ground, the Spiders got touchdowns from Deontes Thompson and also one from Gordon Collins. And look at that pretty strike, Chris, that he just threw to Cortrell Simpson on that highlight. Yeah, I think the, the word that pops out to me watching the entire offense is just efficiency. With the exception of this play, this is pretty amazing. This is well beyond being efficient. Well, maybe that's his, maybe this is the definition of efficient. You take you take a four-yard catch and you make it a 70-yard touchdown. But that was a great one by Porter. I'm sure we'll see that a ton on our highlight film. But, but really, Kyle has just been, you know, again, we said it, steady Eddie. Uh, just again knowing where he wants to go what he's trying to trying to do and it's almost like play by play he's setting you up for something and uh and the defense doesn't know but but he always seems to know uh offensive line has played well they've created holes i know this was a a game where it was put on them take it personal character wise we want to see you show up and we want to get this running game established because that's the, that's where we need to go next offensively and then defensively i obviously agree with you it was a terrific first half and they totally shut down the running game both came Kaylin Newton and Anthony Filia came into this game as 100-yard rushers, and in the first half, Filia had 35 yards, and Newton had just five yards in that first half. So the Spiders did a terrific job there. We called Colby Ritten's name a lot and Brandon Waller's name a lot, and they were Richmond's leading tacklers in the first half. Yeah, and I think we're going to see uh, not just the, the stalwarts, the normal names we, we hear, I think, in the second half. We're going to see some some Madison Days. We're going to see uh, some Marcus Vincents. We're going to see some of these younger guys running around out there, uh, making some plays, getting an opportunity to really get some solid time in the second half. Well, stay with us for the second half. It'll still be fun. It'll still be entertaining, even in blowout form that it is right now. Cortrell Simpson to return the second half kickoff. He's going to bounce it to the outside and has good yardage. We'll give the Spiders the football up at the 34-yard line. That's an area I feel like we're improving in uh, off of last year where we need to continue to improve in. We've got so much explosion. You and I talk about it all the time. All these receivers, defensive backs, where you can give them give them a chance to get the ball and get a chance to get, get loose in space on these kickoff returns and, and punt returns. So haven't had a lot of kickoff returns today, but that was a pretty good one. All right, here comes the spider offense led by Kyle Laletta. Coming out on the field, Blaine Markham there, big number 78. He's getting a lot of playing time today because of the injury to Patrick Klebert, which we hope isn't serious. The Spiders have the luxury of keeping him out of the game. And there's the stat we talked about at halftime with the 48 points. Gordon Collins gets some running room and picks up a first down out to the 45-yard line, 11-yard gain. And there's another strong run. Again, great job by the offensive line, but we talked about it before. What I love about these running backs, particularly when they're competing uh, for the for carries, you got you to make sure you fall forward. You got to make sure you punish that tackler. Did it right there. Deshaun Brissett on the catch for a few yards before he is shoved out of bounds over there on the spider sideline. And that's become, you know, a regular part of this offense, just getting it out there, again, getting it uh, getting it out to the receiver, getting them out on the perimeter, perimeter. Coach Usman talked about that. That's an opportunity to spread that defense, uh, make them more poor so you can come back in and run inside. Big Marius Young right there in the middle of your picture with John Yarborough at center. Laletta to Caleb Drake kind of hugs that one against the uniform jersey. A little bit shy of the first down, so I'm going to do it again, Chris, since I haven't jinxed him yet. They're five for five on third down today, and this is very manageable at third and two. Third and two, and I would think uh, most of those third downs were probably picked up via be the pass. Let's see if we uh, try to run one here. I know that's something we've wanted to improve in, and I uh, did so uh, very well in the first half in terms of short yardage run. healthier life. So get up and move. You'll love the returns, the more you know. You can never know which pool safety step will save a life. Play action that with the jumbo package. Got Stefan out there wide open. Uh, he just gets up the sidelines, gets, gets what he can get. Easy first down. 
the Howard 33 yard line. We're two minutes into the third quarter. This is Collins. Not much there that time. Didn't get any blocks and is actually thrown for a yard loss. And that's what Russ Huseman was talking about this week, Chris, and talking about the running game. He wasn't placing all the blame on the running backs. He knows they've got talented running backs. His comment to us was, we've got to put hats on hats. There you go. Meaning we got to block some people. There you go. We saw that at Colgate. We saw that in week one against Sam Houston. There were times where there, there were guys who just were unblocked, and you could see the offensive linemen kind of looking at each other like, I thought you had them, I thought you had them, and that's just, uh, it's a learning curve that needs to get corrected. And you can see we've done a great job of, of, of that today. Maletta, oh, wide open is Tyler Wilkins. He spins out of a tackle, and he will score. 34 yards, Kyle Maletta to Tyler Wilkins. Sixth touchdown pass of the day. What I've always liked about Tyler Wilkins, and you were saying it in the first half, he's not easy to tackle. He's tall, he's slender, but he is not easy to tackle. And you can see right there, when he caught it, I had a feeling he would break that tackle and go to the house. Rarely does he go down by one tackle. It is a record-setting touchdown pass for Kyle Laletta. No quarterback in Richmond history has ever thrown six touchdown passes in a game. Until today, Kyle Laletta does it. He does it on the 35-yard scoring strike, correct that 34-yard scoring strike to Tyler Wilkins. Wow. Another pass play with a lot of help from his receivers. Uh, not a deep pass, just, a, just a, a slant. Now he does hold and wait till that second window, catches Tyler Wilkins in that second window in the defense. Tyler Wilkins does the rest. Yaks, I know you love to say it, and I love it when we get it done. So great job there by Tyler. Kyle now 24 of 27 for 290 yards and six touchdown passes. Kyle shared the record of five touchdowns thrown in a game with Michael Strauss, who did it twice, and Greg Lilly, who did it way back in 1992 against James Madison. I'll tell you what, Bob, when I see a stat line like this, I just think of the coaches, defensive coordinators who you have in the upcoming weeks as they take a look at the stats and they take a look at the film and it's like, oh my goodness, they, they throw it to 10 receivers. <laughs> How the heck do I game plan for 10 receivers? You got 10 receivers on. Oh, by the way, they, they play four backs. So it's it makes it difficult to kind of, you know, scheme and plan and game plan where they like to do this with this receiver and this with this this player. You can only give a defense so much, your defensive uh, players so much because they only have a week to prepare. And I'm just uh, imagining those, those poor defense coordinators out there when they get this stat line and this tape right and they gotta watch all this and oh by the way that Kyle Aletta kid ain't bad <laughs> another kickoff John Cherison's going to try that pooch kick comes up to about the 31 yard line and great coverage by the Spiders terrific special teams hit there by Tyler Dressler who made a textbook tackle up at the 35-yard line. And I'm sure they liked the height on that, probably liked it a little bit deeper, but you can see when the pooch is called that these guys on the kickoff team get excited because you're going to have a, a situation where it's going to be short and, and everybody's looking up in the air, so they get some, some great shots. This one, Dressler's in there, and boom, just a great hit, drives them all, to, all the way to the ground. But what this does for the Spiders is allows them to try a lot There's of no different foul things. no or legal formation on the kicking team. They did have four guys on either side of the kicker. It allows the Spiders to try some things, play some different people, put more guys on tape, make the opposing team at least spend some time during the week to prepare for everything that they might see today. Definitely. Definitely. It, it, it's a... It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. It's a long season, so coaches definitely think ahead like that. That'll be a procedure penalty, I believe, against Howard, and this has turned into a very tough day. For the Offense, number 63, five-yard penalty, first down. Along those same lines, I wouldn't be surprised if you see some, you know, some different defensive looks. It's just, you know, some things you don't want to show until the last minute, some things you want to show plenty of, uh, so again, when they're putting it in their computer system and the stats come out, uh, they think you run something maybe a little bit more than you normally do. Newton is back in the game at quarterback. He hands off to Desmond Wortham, who has their one touchdown this afternoon. He got the penalty back and then some. Bison go up-tempo. 
and stumbling in the backfield and falling. That kind of typified the Howard day, didn't it? Just kind of the slip there. Yeah, they actually had something there, and mm -hmm. maybe maybe even went a little too fast for themselves. You can see our defensive line wasn't quite set. That could have been a great play for them. Just like that, it is third and five. As we said, they had virtually all three and outs or turnovers other than the 10 play drive on the block field goal and then the touchdown drive. And here's Kalen Newton knocked over. That's Kobe written again. Yeah. Looks like he's in there. Now it looks like he almost just got him down with one arm. Wow, man, he looks like he was Brandon Waller knocks his 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 uh, offensive lineman into Newton and knocks him down. Who gets a sack on that one? <laughs> well, I think Ritten was the closest guy to it, so I'm going to vote for, nope, they're giving it to Waller. I think it should go to Waller. Yeah, he knocked his he guy did. into the quarterback, yep. quarterback, in that, uh, his offensive lineman knocks the quarterback down. That was interesting. You'll our, see that one yep, every day. Our stat crew gives it to Brandon Waller, and here's a bad snap on the punt. Now, there is a penalty flag down. The Spiders would have the ball at about the six or seven yard line. But the Spiders are going to be offside, so this one's going to come back. That'll be a huge break for Howard. It still will not give them yeah. a first down, but at least they won't be giving the Spiders the ball at the six-yard line. Exactly. So I think they're... Offside. Defense. Number 31. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Gonna, gonna still punt likely as expected, but, you, you know, give you an opportunity to, to get a good snap and get a good punt off here. And that'll push the ball up to the 42-yard line. And I think the Bison are going to change their mind here. Okay. They're down 55-7. to seven. They might as well go for it. So both teams, looks like a fire drill out there, scurrying to change units. The Spiders quickly bringing the defense on. And this is tough for Howard, uh, Chris. They were all sitting on the bench. They had their helmets off. They were getting a drink of water. And all of a sudden, their offense is back on the field. All right, defensively, our guys is two, our guys too, so let's see what they do. It'll be Phil Yaw looking for the first down. Forget about that. Daniel Jones comes up from the secondary and puts a great hit on Anthony Phil Yaw. Exclamation point. Daniel Jones is just, it's it's fun watching him come into his own from the from the Colgate game and now here. He's tackling well. That time he filled the gap perfectly, read the gap, filled it, and gets his face across the front. Great tackle. Well, this is going to be an exciting time for redshirt freshman Joe Mancuso because I believe he's about to be the Spider quarterback. A young man out of Blairsville, Georgia, who's been holding for the Spiders on place kicks, will now be the quarterback. And we'll explain to you why you're seeing Joe Mancuso and not Kevin Johnson. I know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's the backup quarterback on paper, and he came in last year when he burned his red shirt here at the end when, when Kyle got hurt. Mancuso hands off on first down, and Jay Palmer's got some running room to the near sideline. But the intent right now, Chris, of Russ Huseman and offensive coordinator Jeff Durden is to make this the redshirt year of Kevin Johnson. And if they can help it, they're not going to play him this season. Absolutely. If you can pull that off, if it works, then that is that is a steal. That might be one of your greatest recruits uh, right there as a co uh, as a coach to be to manage to get that because now you've got him a, a year in your system practice wise. He takes over the reins next year. He knows exactly what to do, where to go. So the learning experience is in there. But you know you got a talented guy who can uh, you know, who who's played at big big games can excel. Boy, what a great move by Jay Palmer, faking right, going left and he's all the way down to the five yard line oh did he put a move on a howard defender to free himself for extra yards how about this kid how about the hips on that one look at that move sticks that that leg gives him the dead leg and gets outside right away still got receivers blocking downfield i think that was caleb drake it's a great pickup like i said you got some backups in but they're still shaking and moving they're making things happen jay palmer has taken an advantage uh anytime he's got an opportunity he's taking advantage of it just that continues today career best 28 yard run for jay palmer there and it's first and goal at the five yard line joe mancuso leading the offense joe mancuso running the ball not going down easy either he gets to about the two yard line before he's dropped yeah joe was smelling smell that end zone on that one hey you know i'm in here yeah well let's make it happen let's get on the stat line here and he does not go down easy at all oh they he, all want to be right yeah he's yeah. still a quarterback though i'm like get out man you, you'll get another <laughs> chance we still need you here well this has been jay palmer's drive i think it would only be appropriate to give number 20 
37 the ball. Absolutely. Let's see what we do here. this thing off from about the one yard line. He's the lone running back behind Mancuso and here he goes and he's in standing up Jay Palmer with his first touchdown of the year six more for the Spiders and the crowd loves it. Jay Palmer has been he's consistently been downhill all game all game and in that time he actually is patient 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 finds a cutback lane cuts it right back into the end zone almost untouched so the way he kind of shakes it up and does something different there threw off the defense good vision easy touchdown. John Cherison is going to get a chance to tack on the 62nd point for the Spiders out of the hold of Joe Mancuso. And that did not work. Cherison misses the PAT wide to the left. So it's a one yard touchdown run for Jay Palmer and a four play 42 yard drive for the Richmond Spiders. In a minute and 49 seconds, we now have 8.41 to go. In the third quarter, it's Richmond 61, Howard 7, as Jay Palmer goes to smile. We'll be back. Welcome back to Robin Stadium, the first of three straight home games for the Spiders. They are about to win their 12th straight home opener, their eighth straight here in eight years at Robin Stadium. You know, they've won their previous seven openers here at Robin Stadium by 28 points a game, and you figured that number might not go up today. It's actually going to go up, it appears. I tell you what, man. I the Spiders, this Robin Stadium has really become a, a great advantage. Like I said, the people come out, you got a great crowd, and our guys just feel comfortable, particularly that first one when you've had a couple games on the road. Now you're back at home. You don't have to travel. You don't have that plane trip. You don't have to sleep in a hotel. Uh, it's just something about it just comes together. You could tell this Howard team coming off of two uh, road games, now going on a third, it starts to wear on you after a while. You saw that graphic just a moment ago. This is already the most points the Spiders have ever scored in a game against a Division I opponent. Kalen Newton to throw, and a good catch is made, and a good run at the tail end of the play by Jaquez Ezzard, who takes it down to the 26-yard line, one of their bigger gains of the day. Yeah, that was a nice ball as well. I mean, he, he, he hits him right in stride. Uh, doesn't really have to break a stride. And Ezard is a guy, they've been trying to get him the ball all day. He's their speedster. You can tell because not many people run away from Michael Keels like that. So he's got the speed. Finally got some time. Fumbles the shotgun snap, but he's still able to hand it off to Desmond Wortham. Wortham picks up good yardage down to the Spider 17-yard line. He got nine on that play. Finishing the thought on the scoring for Richmond twice. They have scored big numbers against Randolph Macon. They had an 80-point game and a 62-point game against the Yellow Jackets and a 74-point game against the Norfolk Marines of all teams and all people. That pass is incomplete with Trent Williams on the coverage with Kyle Anthony. How can you even have North a rivalry with the Norfolk, with the Norfolk Marines? Marines. The Norfolk Why would you Marines. want to put 74 on the board against the Marines? That's a good guy. Exactly. I didn't know. <laughs> that was interesting. Norfolk Marines. That was okay. 1943, Chris. 1943. Just, hey, guys running around competing <laughs> as if they didn't have enough to worry yeah. about, right? <laughs> Newton keeps the ball and he will have a first down and he will have a touchdown. That's the flash of brilliance right there that Howard has seen in the first two weeks from Kalen Newton. He broke tackles and ran away from people there. Yeah, and exactly. That, that's what I was going to point out, the fact that he broke tackles. And that's going to drive Coach Hughes been crazy. But he, you love that in a game like this. You want to walk away with some film you can still coach on. And you have guys in position doing the right thing. But if you don't make the tackle, that's all for not. And uh, also you got to give credit to Newton on that one. Great athletic play. 17-yard touchdown run for Kalen Newton. That's already his fifth rushing touchdown of the year. So Mike London is happy about what he saw there from his offense. And the PAT by Dakota Lebowski is up and it is good. Put the 14th point on the board for Howard. 
I tell you what, and that's here's the deal for for people, you know, just understanding crazy coaches out there. They're they're crazy. Like, why would he get so upset? Because here's the deal: we saw it last year. We had 17 injuries, 17 guys with season-ending injuries. So the next next man up mentality and attitude that that just is people don't just say that to say that it means something. And you get that next man up always needs to be ready. You never know when somebody's going to sprain an ankle, get hurt get injured and you want to have that and you know Howard's not going to give up not under that guy not under Mike Lee Mike London he'll stay fiery he'll stay on those guys the entire game from over here on the, on this sideline Sean Ro Robertson is over there on the other sideline hello Sean hey Bob you mentioned during that last drive that this would be an opportunity for coach Huseman to use that drive as a learning tool while as soon as the special teams unit came off the field he said four times emphatically and angrily that's embarrassing that's embarrassing despite a 61 14 lead he wants that defense to continue to be better and on that last drive as he said that was embarrassing still coaching all the way through and, and there you have it. I mean, yeah. we just talked about that. I mean, you know, coaches don't get to this level and have this level of responsibility because they're sane, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Now, wait a minute. You coached for a while. I like, did. I did. I so you're insane. It, it, well, <laughs> hey, you know, when you're out there and you have that level of responsibility, you want to make these kids better. You want to make this team better. You're a part of a great program. You left Chattanooga to come back to a great program. Just everybody has to put everything in perspective. We don't have time to not look at a play. We don't have time to not grade a play. My job is I love you as a player. I love you, you know, almost like my son. I'm going to make you better. And that's what great coaches do. That's why we're glad to have Coach Usman out here. So the Spiders take over with 7.41 to go in the third quarter. And it'll be Xavier Goodall, number two, lining up to the left of Joe Mancuso at quarterback. Goodall bounces it left, picks up good yardage, about nine on first down. And there we go. Again, being able to run the ball, having different, different backs in the game. Good to see Xavier Goodall. He was one of those 17 we talked about last year. Came out uh, really just explosive, doing a great job. I think he had the uh, the most yardage in the game, first hundred yard game for a freshman since Yuli Scott. Mm. And then um, you know then he has the injury just a couple games later. So another guy just working back, trying to get healthy. Good to see him out there. Penalty flag thrown into the Richmond side. So this one's probably coming back for an illegal formation. And this is the stuff also, Chris, that you know coaches don't want to see. They want to stay sharp. They want to stay focused. Illegal formation. Offense. Five players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Second down. And these will be teaching moments. Absolutely. These will be teaching moments. Um, and, you know, to be quite honest, in sometimes these big games as well, everybody wants it to be respectable, want, want teams to, you know, get have an opportunity. So sometimes the... You know, the, the refs get a little specific as well. <laughs> so. Spiders have some new guys along that uh, offensive line. We'll try and point them out for you. Grant Dixon has come into the game. Redshirt sophomore from Charlotte at left tackle. This is Goodall again escaping a tackle for loss in the backfield and getting it almost to the first down marker, in fact. Uh, Tyler Cole has come into the game at center now. Redshirt sophomore from Purcellville. I tell you what, when you look at this play, again, something we talked about Goodall, he's not a, a he's not a big kid, but he just, he's another one with his capability. He's, he's going to run through the tackle. So if you don't get your face across the front, get both arms around him, you're not going to tackle him. He always does a great job of kind of that yards after contact that we talked about. 5'9", 190-pound sophomore out of Henrico High here in Richmond. Mancuso on the keeper has the first down, and here's a compliment. He looked an awful lot like Kyle the letter running that play there. I thought he looked smooth did a great yes. job on the fact on the fake found the hole got right up in the hole knew exactly what he needed to get All right, we're not trying to go 60 but we need six he gets uh, the, what we need he gets the first down so great job by him mm -hmm. puts that head down not afraid huh nope. following those big offensive linemen see him set up honey is getting some playing time the redshirt freshman out of Harlem at the uh, guard position Jeremiah Brown, redshirt freshman, he's in at receiver. Let's see if some of these guys maybe get an opportunity. I don't want to throw the ball too much, but maybe get an opportunity here and there. 
Goodall hit in the backfield, but keeps his balance and still is able to lunge out there for four yards. Another good second effort run. You, you see what I'm saying? That that really just takes the heart of a defense when that is the third time where he has been had in the backfield. We've simplified the offense. They almost know what's coming. The guy's getting there, and they just can't bring him down. That's good, hard running. And again, that comes from the competition, knowing I got to fight uh, if I want to get some carries maybe in the big time in the first half. And I love that mentality. I love that attitude on his part second down and six spiders will slow the pace here run down that play clock as much as they can and keep the game clock moving and again it's good all coming straight up the middle of the field and look at that carrying tacklers with him at five nine and 190 pounds that's a that's a coach brinks weight room first down right there you there. go coach brink shout out that's the first one hopefully we'll hear several of those this year but i, I tell you what that's the uh I, that also to me that, that's the jay palmer effect jay palmer came in this season wasn't really on the radar we were looking at some of the other guys and he just keeps performing keeps performing every time in practice in the game he just made plays and, and guys realize okay this new coaching staff if you make plays they're going to get you the ball and you can see xavier is, is recognize that hey i'm getting a chance to get the ball i'm going to do everything i can with it he's got it again to the right side makes a good subtle cut to force a defender to miss him and pick up eight more yards did you see that cut that was a nice cut safety comes up safety <laughs> safety comes up he gets that foot in the ground boom gets right up field i love it i love it uh he's you know the definition of what we call a slasher uh, just a, just a slasher he, he's, he only cut maybe once maybe twice at, at the most but he, he kind of he, he's going to get north and south he's going to get you uh, the yardage you need sorry we were laughing at the uh, description in our <laughs> ear from our director blake ellett uh suggesting that we go to the replay of the cut of xavier goodall which we did and he picks up a first down pending a penalty flag on the spider side of the field let's see here still have it on with the might have been offsides on them, or maybe one of our guys had a little movement. Let's see. I'd like to see these guys continue to stay on the, on the field. Mm -hmm. And we'll check the penalty. Discussion by the refs here. That is against Howard. Yeah. Looked like he had a linebacker coming up to, to, to Potts. Offsides. Defense. Number 26. That penalty is declined. Third down. Yeah, coming up the blitz. I think he stepped into the neutral zone a little oh. too early. First down. Sorry. First down. <laughs> Apology accepted, Mr. Gillis, the referee. <laughs> Everybody's losing a little focus at this point with 3.23 to go in the third quarter. But, you know, um, Chris, after the game last week, uh, Russ Huseman admitted kind of what we said on the radio at the end of the game that it just looked like a sigh of relief, a sense of relief that these guys had gotten that first win. Uh, players and coaches, that they could now kind of relax, settle into a groove. Nobody was pressing to get that first win with a new coaching staff, different players, that kind of thing. Joe Mancuso makes a couple of nice moves, and he picks up a first down on about an 18-yard run for the redshirt freshman quarterback. I love it. I love it. We're off. We're up here talking about Kevin <laughs> Kevin Johnson next year. Joe was reminding us, hey, guess what? I'm coming back too. <laughs> so there will be a, a quarterback competition. Uh, looks good. I just when he when he gets out there, he looks confident. Um, confident in his, in his speed, in his cuts, and uh, those guys are downfield. I, I say it all the time, but our receivers do a great job of blocking downfield, so obviously that's a, that's a focus of our coaching staff. So there have been ten different receivers and seven different ball carriers today for Richmond. There you go. Scheme that, Mr. Defense Coordinator. Yeah. Right? <laughs> this is good all looking for some running room, and he gets to about the 13-yard line. The Spiders have now racked up 530 yards of total offense with 235 of that on the ground and counting and just good push uh, i know offensive linemen use that term a lot just good push you know that at that time xavier goodall didn't do a lot just kind of stood behind his uh, offensive line and they, they pushed him for uh maybe three three and a half yards down to a minute 50 to go here in the third quarter second down and seven you know what's funny this this game is it's good, almost going into the fourth quarter. It's going to end earlier than the last two games with all the fact yes. We're not going to know what to do when it hits hour four. Exactly. 
There goes Goodall again, turning the corner. Oh, he ran into his own blocker over there. Right at the sticks, close to the first down. Caught him off guard. I know he really wanted to get that first down. Heck, if he gets past there and makes that cut, he might take that one into the house, and I know he wants to get one. About a yard or so short of the first down, so the Spiders will get a third down opportunity with a different offense on the field. Let's see if they can convert. Let's call it third and two. Stefan Jacobs back in, so it looks like we're going to go back, back to that jumbo package, two tights. Will Garrity is the other tight end, number 88, on the right side of your screen. Stefan Jacob lines up on the left side. Deshaun Tibbs getting some action, number 87 to the left. This is Goodall. He'll have the first down inside the five, and the Spiders are now eight for eight on third down conversions. That'll feel really good. Richmond came in at only 34% success rate on third down. That number is going to go way up with today's performance. And it almost looks odd <laughs> at that point. Um, and Cuso goes under center. And this day of the spread, and Richmond is included, it's almost like, what, what, what's he doing under there? You know, we're just so used to seeing that the center snap it and, uh, and seeing the quarterback off the ball when he actually gets under center. It looks odd. Spiders will have to run one more play here in the third quarter. We'll see if they can get it in the end zone on first and goal from the three-yard line. It is Xavier Goodall down to about the one. A little bit of confusion there as he went one way and Mancuso went the same way, and they almost ran into each other on the handoff. And they'll be about a yard shy of the end zone. They'll have to That's walk the, the entire way to the field. As we have come to the end of the third quarter, it's been a record-setting day for the Richmond Spiders. The most points they have ever scored in a game against a Division I opponent. And quarterback Kyle Valletta has thrown six touchdown passes. That is a school record as well. We'll go to the fourth quarter on Family Weekend and Robin Stadium with the Spiders well in command of the Howard Bison. Spider offense charging back out onto the field. Why not? Already with 61 on the board and their second and goal with the Howard. One yard line as we welcome you back to Robin Stadium with Chris Anderson, Bob Black in the booth, Sean Robertson on the sidelines, Blake Ellett directing our terrific Spider TV crew. Xavier Goodall trying to get in the end zone, but he couldn't on that play. Stopped at the two-yard line he lost a yard it'll be third and goal from the two there was that crazy formation again where the quarterback gets under the center <laughs> but, uh, you know again it's 61 14 uh, you know if you're watching the guys who are watching you know why is it why is it such a big deal it's such a big deal because you got you your, your again your second team offense out there uh, you want to see him finish a great drive with a touchdown we have an injured Howard player Looks like Tyler Fuller, their new nose tackle, who is face down now on the field. They'll give it a chance for the Spiders to regroup and figure out what they'd like to try and do with the challenge of third and goal. First of three straight home games. Next week is the conference opener against Elon, 6 o'clock here at Robbins Stadium. We'll tell you more about our TV coverage for that game when we come back in just a moment. 14.37 to go, fourth quarter, all Richmond. While we were away, Joe Mancuso, that guy right there, took it in from two yards out for his first collegiate touchdown. A thrill for this guy, number 12, Joe Mancuso. Joe better watch out. He keeps lowering his head, running like that. We might make him a fullback. <laughs> we need that. Put that in there. He looks good. Two I love you, too. And mom, I... And, uh, you know, you're trying to get a look and you, you want to keep everybody healthy. This is an opportunity to get every to see everything. John Cherison to kick another one away as he angles it for the near sideline and his second one of the game that goes out of bounds. The Spider special teams will be working on that this week leading up to, as I said, the Elon game, Chris, is next Saturday. It's the conference opener. It's a six o'clock game. We will have it on two of our outlets next week locally on WTVR's digital channel, 6.3, beginning at 6 o'clock, the full game. And then Comcast Sportsnet Mid-Atlantic Plus will join us at 7 o'clock next Saturday night from here at Robbins Stadium. Under the lights. The lights are on right now, but officially a night game. 
next week? Well, I can bet you you're going to hopefully see some improved special teams play because I'm, I'm sure Coach Huseman is, is very active and involved with our special teams. I'm sure you'll see that. Uh, they'll be working on that plenty this week, particularly this kickoff team. Well, Kalen Newton just got sacked by Maurice Jackson, the sophomore defensive tackle. Got himself a quarterback sack. Here he comes on the left side of your screen. He's going to love that when he sees it on tape, isn't he? Yeah, yes, he is. And continued, you know, great coverage out here by the defensive backs. Of course, a former defensive back saying that. Yep. Phil Yard to the outside, turns the corner and gets tracked down by Daniel Jones with a late penalty flag at the end of the play. I'm just impressed. Uh, Daniel Jones is just, just coming up. I mean, Phil Yard's a great, not a good running back. He's a great running back, probably one of the better ones we'll see this year. Daniel Jones does a great job running him down and uh, making that tackle there. We'll wait on the infraction. Let's see what we got here. There's no foul for face mask. Third down. No penalty at all. Let's just keep playing. <laughs> And it's third and six for Kalen Newton, the freshman quarterback out of Atlanta. Yes, he is Cam Newton's younger brother. Cam Newton was at their spring game, Mike London was saying this way. Kind of kept a low profile, watched his brother play. Kalen throws down the sideline and a great catch by Kyle Anthony, a name we have hardly called today. He's their leading receiver, came into the game with nine catches, two touchdowns, and they just haven't been able to target him much this afternoon. Yeah, Joshua Anderson is on the cover uh, coverage on that one. Redshirt sophomore out of Woodbridge, and he does a good job. He's with them step by step. That's one of those things that come with just experience, being on the field. When you're in that type of uh, you know leverage with the receiver, that's when it's time to get your head around. No reason to be uh, afraid, but that just takes practice and being on the field. He'll get better at that. Newton on the run, throws for the end zone, and a leaping catch by Jaquez Ezard for the touchdown. Terrific catch by Ezard, but it might go for naught. There is a penalty flag in the Howard backfield. Nope, it'll be against Richmond for roughing the passer. So that touchdown's going to count. Ezard makes a terrific catch. First they might... foul. Roughing the passer. Yep, Deeper. here we go. Number 43. That foul will be enforced on the kickoff. The result of the play touchdown. I'm sure they're reviewing that in the replay booth just to our left, but he certainly got a foot down and scores his first touchdown of the year. Yeah, he definitely got a foot down. That's a great toss by Newton on that one. Put it right on the money. Uh, went after, uh, you know, went after Anderson again on that one. Again, Anderson in great position, and he'll get that. He'll learn that, I promise you. Just getting that head around, he could have easily made a play on that ball, maybe even picked it off. Just got to get out there, play, feel comfortable, and he'll, we'll keep working on that. Spiders will get the ball back after a break with 13-19 remaining in our game. Ezard with the touchdown for Howard. Richmond still with an insurmountable lead at 68-21. We'll be back. CSN Mid-Atlantic, home of the Capitals. Fire. It does not get any better than that. The Wizards. That's a big play. The biggest moments. Anywhere, anytime. And online at csnmidatlantic.com. CSN Mid-Atlantic. Man, those guys at Crop Metcalf are the best. I gotta tell everybody. Sixty-eight twenty-one, Richmond. That score will reverberate around the CAA. We'll give you some other scores from conference games today. You know, the CAA came into play this week with four teams in the top ten. But that is going to shake up a little bit, Chris, because New Hampshire really got surprised today, and they got waxed by Holy Cross 51-26. to 26. Wow. Yeah, they were <laughs> one of the four in the top ten with JMU and Richmond and Villanova, and they fall today 51-26. Rhode Island got its first win of the season, so every team in the league has at least one victory now. URI beat Harvard 17-10. I would not have called that. I would not have called that New Hampshire uh, Holy Cross game. So, big time. 
Big time. Uh, I guess I get to say it next week. I get to say my, my you know, another day in the CAA. <laughs> I get to say it next week. So looking forward to it. Um, still, you know, arguably, I don't think you should argue, but arguably, it's, uh, CAA is the toughest conference in FCS football. And uh, the Rich, Richmond Spiders are, you know, every year we're at the top where we're competing for that top spot. And uh, welcome, Coach Usman. <laughs> no stress, no pressure. Just the toughest conference in, in uh, FCS, and, and we expect to win it. So welcome. Glad to have you. He replaced Danny Rocco, who is coaching at Delaware now, and the Blue Hens lead Cornell today. 17-0 approaching halftime. You know they're going to have a good defense. They had a pretty good yep. defense last year, and under Coach Rocco, you know it will be even better. And it is so far today. They're pitching a shutout. JMU leads Norfolk State 16-7 in the second quarter. I think that's a little surprising, only in that most of us thought JMU would All roll. Time. And just as I say that, the score is Number updated to 23-7 to for the Dukes. Norfolk State has a lot of talent from the Richmond area, including uh, quarterback uh, Juwan Carter out of Highland Springs starting for them this week. Uh, he's kind of uh, rotated so far, but he's going to get his first start this week at, at JMU. That's a tough one to throw, tough environment to throw a true freshman into. And I think uh, Newton has experienced the same thing today. Tough environment for a true freshman. Jay Palmer on the carry, no gain. The penalty was on Howard. It'll be second down and five. You know, they had a great quarterback at Howard and a name that would be familiar to you if you watch ESPN at all. Jay Walker, who's a college football analyst now for ESPN, he played at Howard. In fact, he was their quarterback when they went undefeated in the regular season in 1993 all right. and made their first playoff appearance. He's actually in their Hall of Fame. Jay Walker, the uh, ESPN Sports Center anchor. See, I try to tell these people when they when they put a mic in your hand and they ask you to to give your thoughts, it usually means you did a little something when you were on the field. Mm -hmm. So uh, now Jay's a great player, a little before my time, but but I'm aware of him, and uh, you know, great season for Howard. Yeah, they won the MEAC that year and got to the playoffs, or undefeated going into the postseason. Good football, good talent coming out of the MEAC. I know the the one everybody's replayed it down, second down. Boy, these officials have lost focus. <laughs> That's about the third or fourth time no penalty on the call well, <laughs> he did not apologize that time he just said inadvertent whistle <laughs> but in, in terms of the MIAC, uh you know the in talent coming out uh Tariq Cohen who came out of North Carolina a and the Spiders faced him last year in the playoffs how about that fourth round draft pick uh gets in first game uh, for the Bears 157 yards how impressive was that? How impressive is, am I that I had him on my fantasy football team? <laughs> I just, I just want to put that out so the world knows that. <laughs> nice job, coach. <laughs> I knew when we played him, I watched a ton of film, and I'm studying. I'm like, man, if, if a team gets him, much like, uh, you know, Anthony Filia, uh Howard's running back this year, he's special. He does some different things, particularly when you get him in space. The team knows how to use him. He can do something, and he proved that last week. Jay Palmer with another good run. He picks up the first down out to the 34-yard line. A lot of CA games, teams in the CA playing tonight, including our opponent next week. Elon is home today, 6 o'clock against Charleston Southern. Steady diet of Jay Palmer right now. Stood up after about a four-yard gain. That Sacred Heart is at Stony Brook, Lafayette. Uh, John Garrett, our former offense coordinator, the head coach at Lafayette, he's off to a tough start at 0-2, and, and he's at Villanova. Tonight, William & Mary host Bucknell. Towson is at St. Francis and Albany at home against Monmouth. Sorry, partner, didn't mean to interrupt. Now, Coach Garrett, they're not doing any, any, any favors with that schedule. No. He's got, yeah. he's got uh, you know, in terms of Lafayette, he's got some, some tough opponents on that, on that schedule, so... Uh, his guys will be taking some tough lessons this year, but I'm sure he'll get them together. Believe in him. He definitely knows how to run an offense. Well, this game has deteriorated a little bit here with all the flags and penalties and whatnot, which coaches hate to see even when you're playing your second and third string guys. Indeed. Offside. Defense. Number 92. Five-yard penalty. Second down. That is the fifth penalty of the day against Howard. Six have been whistled against Richmond with 10.51 to go. I know you're probably not going to throw the ball, but I would love to see the Spiders get Deshaun Tibbs a catch. Uh, this team just loves that kid. Yeah, they do. Senior captain. Uh, 
That, that is a tough one. Yeah. I mean, you, you got 68 on the board. Uh, you're playing not just anybody. You know, if you're Coach Usman, you're playing a friend in Coach mm -hmm. London. You want to be respectful. But at the same time, like you said, that kid, and look at him. He's in there. He's blocking. He's fighting. Everybody knows they're going to run the ball. Inside receiver. So he's blocking linebackers on every play. Um, you know, maybe if there's a third down and long situation, we'll see. Uh, I would definitely maybe give him a shot, even if it's just a hitch, a slant, something simple. That kid deserves it. Or I might get Jeremiah Brown a catch because somewhere down the road this year, next year, whenever, he's another guy who factors into the spider plans. Definitely. I mean, if there's one position where we are loaded, <laughs> it is uh, receiver. And, yeah. and he's, I mean, in one way, you got to be patient, but in another way, you got to be hungry. And I think when you listen to Dejan Brissett uh, talk about that, um, you know, he said all the time, I, I was hungry last year with Brian Brown. Look at Jay Palmer go. He is going to outrace almost everybody. To the two-yard line goes Jay Palmer. Brian Cook saved a touchdown. And Jay's kicking himself a little bit that he didn't have that light kick at the end to finish it to the goal line. I'll tell you what, Jay is six foot two fifteen. He looks like he's 230. But on that one, he looked like Usain Bolt. I didn't know he had that gear. He's got another gear. He is trucking. Slows down just a little bit long enough for that uh, Howard defensive back to get him. But, man, that's that's the way to hit that hole. And we say it again. Like we said, slow through, fast through, slow two, fast through. Once he found the hole, he took off. With that 53-yard burst, Jay Palmer's got himself a 100-yard game. 105. Joe Mancuso, Mike Mancuso, I beg your pardon, stopped at about the two-yard line. How about that? How about that? Gets a 100-yard game. Well-deserved. Love to see that for that kid. And a part of me was like, well, give him the touchdown, but he barely could run on that last play. <laughs> I don't think 53 yards, I looked at him, and you, you could see him. He doesn't want to give the tap because he wants the touchdown, but but he's he's he's, he's tired. He's <laughs> getting it here. I don't care if he's tired or not. They he's are, getting it. Getting this in zone. the ball in his belly right here. If you're an offensive lineman, you're looking back like, <laughs> shut up and just get behind me and run. Yeah. <laughs> All right, keep your eye on number 27 there, friends. Here he comes. And there he goes, but he didn't get there. He stopped at the one, one and a half yard line. I'd give it to him again. I think, yeah, it, it's no doubt about it. You're you're probably going to see an RPO situation right here where it's going to be either, you know, he, uh, he gives to, to Jay or, or Joe Mancusa. He keeps it. And uh, hopefully we can get in the end zone. Again, we talk about finishing drives. Uh, nothing burns and uh, a coach more than, than getting all the way down here and not being able to finish by getting in the end zone. I don't care if it's first, second, third string or what point in the game it is. All right, let's see how the Spiders attack it on third and goal at the two-yard line. Pistol formation. There's Palmer behind Mancuso. And there's Palmer trying to bounce it to the outside, but he's going to get thrown down for a loss all the way back at the eight-yard line. Yeah, good. And you saw some good fight right there from the Bison, basically saying, hey, you know, we know you're going to run the ball. We're, we're just not giving it up. All eyes were on, uh, on Jay on that one. Let's see if we kick the field goal or, or, or what they do here. The field goal unit started onto the field, and then they came back. My guess is Russ Huseman may wind this clock down, play clock down, almost to zero, and either just run a play or call a timeout and then run a play and this is a tough one because i think in some ways you, you want to be respectful keep the score down and in other ways our, our kickers haven't had the best year so far so you give them a shot well the play clock ran out they were trying to get the play away but the play clock did wind down so they they game. churned 40 off seconds off 12. of that clock five yard penalty fourth down mike london do you get that shot you were talking about? Do you do you put it up in the air to, to Tibbs, or do you do you run it here? It's a, I don't know. It's a tough. I, one. It is a tough, tough call. I mean, you got like you said, you got backups in the game who would love the opportunity to catch a pass. Mancusa would love to throw a pass. You're well beyond the point of rubbing it in. That's that would not be an issue. I don't think Mike London would question that. Jordan Kennedy in it, one of the receivers here. 
Spiders will keep it on the ground with Palmer, and he just gets to the 10-yard line. And that was certainly the sportsmanlike thing to do. And, and you know what, Chris? We got smart kids. They understand what's happening here. They know who's on the other sideline. They understand you don't want to rub it in. And Jay Palmer's loving it. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Palmer's Palmer th wishing he would have gotten in the, in the end zone. If I just had two more yeah. steps. Yeah. I uh, just kind of <laughs> ran out of gas. I, I loved it, though, just to see that burst. Very relaxed look on that spider sideline. They will feel good about this one and get back to work tomorrow and begin to prepare for the CAA opener against Elon next Saturday night at 6 p.m. Meantime, Howard will just try to get a little bit better. That throw is overthrown as the spiders were really charging. Yeah, was, almost uh, looked like the, I don't know, it was a quick count. It almost looked like some of the offensive linemen for Howard weren't ready. First shot by Joni really put a rush on Newland, on uh, Newton that time. Guys are coming. Up. Still just a good, uh, just a good learning experience for Newton. Young Newton, they still have him in the game. Uh, Brendan Marion uh, on the coaching staff, the offensive coordinator for Howard, really a great story. You can just see him. He talked about working with young talent. I'll pull up a video. Just talked about working with young talent, young quarterbacks, and just how to continue to work with them, help them get better. Again, Newton rushed to throw that football. He was looking for Kyle Anthony, and it falls incomplete. Anthony coming off a 100-yard game last week against Kent State with five catches. But the, uh, the Marion story was interesting. Mm -hmm. He was actually high school, came out, had a great high school career, was actually... Uh, you know, just didn't work out, didn't get the offers. He goes out to California Junior College, was actually homeless at one point. They had no idea. Uh, he was playing homeless, ended up getting a, uh, having a good, good career out there, getting a full scholarship to Tulsa. Who does he run into at Tulsa? Gus Malzone, who ends up coaching Cam Newton on down the line. It's just funny the way things work out. Um, ended up when, I think when he graduated, he had the FBS uh, career record for yards per reception. Just had a great career. Um, he goes on to the NFL for a while, then goes to the Montreal Alouettes where he he meets young London, Coach London's son. There's a relationship, and it's just funny the way this coaching thing all kind of works together. It's a tight-knit community. Very much so. Yeah. You just never know who you're going to meet. So here comes the punt. The Spiders will get the ball back probably close to midfield. That's probably the best punt of the day right there by Dakota Lebowski. And Tyler Wilkins isn't taking any chances. He's not going to run that one back. He will take the fair catch. Spiders will have the ball at the 42-yard line. Here's that scintillating run by Jay Palmer just shy of the goal line. Palmer with a 100-yard day for the first time in his Richmond career. A break and then the today welcome back Devin Campbell in the game at running back now for Richmond I can tell you I did not have him on my play-by-play -play chart today Chris so he's getting an opportunity to get on tape there you that, go. that excited the spider sideline he had that one carry and out of the game he comes now over there with coach Huseman and the staff you love it because, yeah. I mean, it, it, again, we say it every year. It's a team sport. You know, it's not like if you're not starting, you're not working hard in practice and you're not out there for the two-a-days. And, no, you're, you're doing all of that. Um, you're just, you know, we all wait for our moment. And when you get a moment, you, know, you try to make the most of it. And, and as, a good two, as a good teammate, which we think the Spiders are, we're going to cheer for you. So Devin Campbell got a carry. So now Justin Hayes gets a carry, and he's close to the first down. So, um, hey, if you were at Robin Stadium today and you left, well, we hope you went somewhere and watched the end of the game, but you missed the chance to see all these guys get their first action. Young right? guys, young guys. And you're going to come back and you're, you're going to see more of these guys next year and the year yeah. after. And you're going to, you're going to, you know, we're going to tell you, you had a chance to see them first. Come back and see another game. <laughs> Why don't you? Because a lot of people have headed to post-game tailgates or their homes to watch us, Chris. All right. For the final four minutes, don't get nervous. Third down and one, and the Spiders will pick up another first down. That'll really please Russ Huseman. The Spiders are 10 for 11 on third down conversions today. You will win a lot of games that is keeping impressive. the ball like that. That is impressive. And I'll tell you what, this uh, 
the second string offensive line. They are going to re they're going to sleep well tonight. There, there might be uh, an ice bath in their future because they are working it. Uh, everybody knows it's going to be a run. We're coming right at you. They're still lining up and, and they're just plugging away, moving bodies. So impressive by uh, this entire offensive line, first and second string. From the Howard 45 yard line. Go to glad.org. That's G L A A D.org. There are so many things that make us who we are. It's not just about what's on the outside, it's what's inside that really counts. So get to know lots of kids around you. You'll make some really great friends. The more you know. It's, uh... Dale Matthews Jr. It's almost forgotten the two interceptions he had in the first half. I think on defense, you got to talk about uh, uh, Dale Matthews. You got to talk about Cody Ritten. Had an excellent first half. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Brandon offensively, Waller. Brandon Waller. Right. You know, then offensively, Jays had a great game. Uh, Xavier Goodall came in on that one drive and just just dominated mm -hmm. up and down the field, breaking tackles. So it's uh, the, the the load has been shared today. Guys have stepped up and they're playing well. Still continuing now. Well, the Spiders will feel good going into conference play now. They'll be 2-1 and one as Devin Campbell comes out of the game. They will now have won 12 straight home openers, all eight, obviously, here at Robbins Stadium. 34-11 and 11 in eight years in this facility and 14 wins in the last 15 games at home. As Sean Robertson talked about that on our Open the domination of Richmond at home, and it has certainly held true today. Third and five for the Spiders as Hayes takes the handoff. So that will uh, blemish the third down stat just a little bit. And it'll be fourth and four, and the Spiders will let the clock run as far down as they can and run one more play here. Yeah, I can tell you what. Um... Do tell. <laughs> <laughs> kind of forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> We're all lose, losing focus a little bit here. It happens to all of us. Uh, but, you know, uh, not fourth me, down. Partner. I'm not hungry. I'm not thirsty. <laughs> I'm ready for more football. Fourth down. Let's see what we do here. <laughs> Go straight up to gut, I'm sure. I think so. Maybe Mancuso himself Looks this like time, he is huh? going to yeah. keep it and run it. Might be able to pick it up. Yeah. Oh, oh, he's, he's close. Yep. Yep. Yeah. About a yard shy. He is close. So Howard will get the ball back with a minute 16 remaining. And my guess, knowing Mike London as well as I do, he will instruct his offense to run two plays, two running plays, and get out of here and head back up 95. I hope he doesn't have a lot of traffic going back up to D.C. Yeah, you never know. You never know. Yeah. That, that, that rod can be... An hour and a half or four and a half. Yeah. <laughs> you just I have experienced you, more of the latter than the former, I can you tell just you. Just never know. <laughs> so a learning experience nonetheless for this uh, young young team. They're gonna take a shot. Yeah, and they got it. The pass is caught right on the Howard sideline by Jason Collins. Wide receiver, former quarterback, actually, for the Bison. There you go. Yeah, actually played a couple games last year uh, at quarterback. And, you know, hey, I'm not mad. I get it. You know, keep playing, keep running, Absolutely. keep working. Uh, you want to end something. You want to be able to end the game with some type of uh, positive mark. So, Handoff comes straight ahead there to Jamon Williams into the middle of the line to about the 17. <laughs> Collins is a kid. Chris had a great game against UNLV. Five catches for 39 yards, redshirt junior. Out of Fort Lauderdale. Didn't see him. Didn't see him a lot today. Not that they didn't try to get him the ball. I just think, you know, the, the pressure was on from, from minute one with our guys. They, they go to him again right here. On a great defense. Ball. Keep going. Keep great going. Play coverage. Play. Great coverage. Yeah. Great coverage. Duncan Rogers on that one. Just stays in position. Now you can see the guys on the, on the sideline going crazy. You're going up against uh, their starting receiver. He just, you know, we talked about the yardage he picked up a couple weeks ago at UNLV. And Duncan Rogers hops in man to man on an island and makes a great play. Good job. Sometimes I feel, Chris, this is when coaches coach the hardest. When they got all the youngsters in the game like this. Absolutely. Newton Absolutely. Tries to make a move and Chad Wiggins had none of it. Because these are the guys who, I mean, they're, they're looking for you for co for coaching, um, for, for guidance. They don't have 100,000 plays of experience under the belt like some of our redshirt seniors. You know, four years, they've been winning. They're, they're looking for the coaches. They're doing what they've been taught. Fourth down. Newton gets sacked in the backfield by Chad Wiggins. 
Hopkins. That's a perfect end to a near perfect day for the Richmond Spiders. That's a great job by Chad Wiggins. That's a voice I think we haven't heard a, a lot this year, but another guy who was thrown into action last year. 17 uh, guys hurt, injured. He pops up making plays last year, making plays this year. Great to see him on that one. Spiders will need to take one snap with three seconds to go. Richmond will improve to two and one. Heading into conference play next week, Howard falls to one and two. They also start conference action with Bethune-Cookman at home next week. Record-setting day for the Richmond Spiders. And Coach Russ Usman coaching his first game at Robbins Stadium and an emphatic, impressive victory. Did you see him jumping up and down, how excited he was with that sack by Chad Wiggins? That's an A, a defensive coach, and like you said, coaches coach the hardest when some of these guys are in the game. Richmond 68, Howard 21. It's a final from Robin Stadium. Russ Huseman and Mike London, longtime friends, coaching colleagues, will meet at midfield. This is a great scene here, just these two guys. Great friends, been through a lot. Championship run together. And here they are, different positions, meeting and uh, just sharing a few words. They were integral parts of the 2008 National Championship that the Spiders secured. Look at that hug from Russ to Mike. And that's what college football is all about right there, my friend. There you go. There you go. You said they've, they've been in conversation. Uh, Coach Usman said they still talk, you know, fairly regularly. I, I even wonder if, you know, when, when Coach London takes that job at Howard, if he doesn't give Coach Usman a call and say, hey, you know, you went to a program that was struggling and, and people question you, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about doing this. I wonder if that's a conversation they had. Record-setting day for the Richmond Spiders. Points on the board with 68, the most ever against the Division I opponent. Kyle Laletta sets a school record for touchdown passes in a game with six. He goes 24 of 27 for 290 yards. And those six touchdowns, the Spiders put 34 on the board in the second quarter. That's a record against the Division I opponent. As well, the Spiders rack up 622 yards of total offense and most importantly for the program Chris and for this season a lot of guys got to play today and put themselves on tape they will be watching in the film room this week all right Richmond wins it by a score of 68 to 21 over the Howard Bison we're going to start our lumber liquidators post game show we're going to be able to go down to the field to Sean Robertson he will get head coach Russ Huseman and star quarterback Kyle Valletta as well. Let's start with the coach, Sean. Thanks, by the way, with Russ Huseman, coach. Um, she said at the beginning of the day. I love what our running backs did. I, I'm not sure we only threw the ball a couple times in the second half and tried to drain the clock, but Looked like we were blocking some people. Our backs were making some good cuts. Kyle Laletta, your starting quarterback. Six touchdowns on the afternoon, setting a school record for most in a, in a single game. Talk to me about how well he played for you this afternoon. Yeah, he's a tremendous player. I mean, you, you say it, you see it. Everybody out there sees it. I mean, he's a he's an unbelievable player, man. He trusts everything he does out there, puts the ball in the numbers. Uh, love the kid, man. He can play. Nice way to go into conference play with this type of performance. Yeah, and we got to play a lot of people. That was nice. The first two games, you know, you're not playing many people. And in this one, we got to play a lot, which makes it fun. Coach, congratulations on the win. Talk to you next week. Appreciate it. Good to see you guys. We got Kyle Laletta standing by. He's joining me right now you set a singles game record in school history most touchdowns in one game with six how were you able to be so effective today against Howard? Uh, I think it was just great execution um, the O-line did a great job protecting me uh, the routes were crisp um, I think we we're on time with the football we we're accurate and and uh, you know I think that's just what executing does I mean we have that potential week to week and uh, today I really think we, we put it all together seem like you've been on fire all three games this season but more specifically today talk to me about that play to Porter Abel when he was able to type rope down the sideline. Yeah, he had a backline route and he just kind of pulled out of it and uh, we had practiced that in practice and we ran it uh, once before and uh, we actually scored on it and uh, they kind of covered the back and that was just my second
second progression, and he did a nice job coming out of the route and uh, was just pitch and catch from there. How cool was it to see the running game really getting after it today? It's great. We needed that to happen, and, uh, you know, that just makes us all that more dynamic. Um, I think with, you know, our passing game's been there, and, and getting that running game going tonight was huge for us, and we'll carry that into the next game. Congrats on the win. Congratulations on setting Thank the record. Good luck to you next week. Big win for the Richmond Spiders, but guys, 68-21 over Howard as they improved to 2-1 and one on the season. Back to you guys. All right, Sean. Thank you very much. Great job down there. Nice to hear from a relaxed Spider head coach, Russ Huseman, and the record-setting quarterback, Kyle Valletta, in the Spiders' 68-21 victory. Don't go away. We'll wrap it up with more of our Lumber Liquidators post-game show when we return to Robbins Stadium. At the University of... A successful home opener once again for the Richmond Spiders, and they do it on family weekend today as well with a 68-21 victory over Howard. All right, Chris, give me uh, your favorite highlights of a day that was just absolutely filled with terrific plays offensively and defensively. Uh, I, you know, there's the obvious. You got to start off with Kyle just being extremely sharp. Uh, yeah, you see the six, six touchdowns, but I mean, he was on the money. At one point, he was 16 or 17 out of 19 uh, receptions. At one point, it was like, man, is, is he going to miss? Uh, I think you got to, again, we talked about that, that up front, uh, Clyde, Waller, uh, Ritten, you know, Ritten, yeah. all those guys. You got to talk about Dale Matthews stepping in front of a couple. And then I love the, the 10 receivers, uh, multiple people catching the ball, particularly that Porter Abel catch. Speaking of that Porter Abel catch, it's unanimous. Our vote for the Ace Electric play of the day, this catch and run by Porter Abel. The throw was pretty simple, wasn't it, by Kyle Valletta? And look what Porter Abel did. Picking him up and putting him down. Yeah. Looks like MC Hammer, that running man. Look at that. They can't get him. <laughs> I love it. He, that's just that one-two, that hunger, that drive. I got to get there. And you can see it's almost surprised when he gets there. Like, oh, my goodness. They can't stop me out here. All part, excuse me, all part of 622 yards of total offense today for Richmond. And congrats to the defense as well, Chris. They held one of the top rushing teams in the nation to 91 yards on the ground today. Obviously, in the second half, they didn't run it as much. They were so far behind. But they put the cl clamps on Kalen Newton and Anthony Filiaw. That is impressive to me, Bob. I mean, I, I mean, I don't want to take anything against the offense, but that offense is so good. Sometimes, you, you know, we just expect them to do what they do. Uh, and just to see this defense. And also, you're talking about you and I have seen that defense, you know, two weeks ago from Sam Houston and seeing the progression from week one to week two and now week two to week three. And it's like, three, it's like oh, my gosh, we, we're going to continue to improve. We're going to continue to learn this new system. And they're just going to get better and better. You know, as we said, in week one, it was the offense that shined, the defense that struggled. In week two, the defense did a great job to win a low-scoring game. The offense struggled. They put both sides of the ball together this afternoon. Absolutely, and that's that's always the goal. And, and once you get there, it's A, we want to continue this pace, and, and B, we want to continue to get better. So that'll be the scream. That'll be the, what the coaches are yelling and hollering this week in practice as, as we prepare for Elon. Conference play begins next Saturday night against that Elon team that Chris just mentioned. Six o'clock is our game time. We'll be on CBS 6.3 at six o'clock. CSN Plus Mid-Atlantic joins us at seven o'clock. But we'll enjoy today before we get to next Saturday. The Spiders defeat Howard 68 to 21. For Chris Anderson, Sean Robertson, and our entire Spider TV crew, Bob Black saying so long from Robin Stadium. Have a great remainder of your weekend.